guys, and welcome back to the Who Cares Anyway podcast. It's Friday night. We are live. Uh, people are trying to talk to me right as the r- intro was rolling, but that's all right. Because, huh. anyway, see, luckily, you know, they're, they're trying to say something, but I haven't unmuted their channels yet. And that's good, because we're going to keep it that way for just a, just a quick moment. Because, you know, obviously tonight we got a pretty stacked show. We're going to talk about a lot of movie news, some breaking shit that happened today, and we'll get into that pretty much right away. But, of course, you know, there's uh, some people we need to welcome back to the show for their first time in, like, a month. Where the fuck has this guy been? Ryan McClellan. Dude, what's up? How how are you, and where the hell have you been? I'm good. Uh, You know, sometimes the Army lets me out of my cage so I can roam around and be free. And that's just how it is. But no, I've been good, man. Doing a lot of school things, doing a lot of army things, trying to be smarter and faster and stronger and better and all that. And just, you know, living life, being awesome. I can't, I can't help it. Yeah. Uh, yes, that that is fair. And as always, you know, I'll always say thank you for your service because, hey, thank you for your support. So- someone's got to, you know, uh, put their life on the line for, you know, the the people like me who are just too stupid to know how to kill people <laughs> nah, nah, nah. you're good man you're good thanks man we need people we need people to host the show too so boom that's true that's true we do and i guess i'm good for one thing and that's that also uh nico rigoli nico what's up how you been man how's your week I, it's been an interesting week to say the least but i can definitely say that i'm having a nico, better week than Lori lockwood Oh. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I, I, I can't give you too much crap because uh, I'm actually a little tired this week. I haven't gotten a lot of sleep. And to to you know, as part of segueing into uh, the next, the last person on the panel, of course, my other co-host, I'm going to throw him under the bus just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because if there's anyone who's been getting on my case about making sure that I'm caught up on Game of Thrones before talking about it the weekend of Star Wars celebration of all times, Case, you know I love you, so I had to give you just a little grief. How you doing, man? Welcome to the show. God damn. Okay, stop. Wow. You gotta fix your mic, man. Yeah, fix your mic, dude. What the hell just happened? Am I am I just way too loud? Okay, now you're good. Now you're good. (laughs) We had we had had a little explosion of volume right there. (laughs) So to everybody, uh, I apologize for your to your earbuds, but yes, Case, you're good now. You're good. I apologize for that as well. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Anyway, cheers, guys. Good evening, wherever you are, afternoon, morning, uh, depending on times for us, because of course it is uh, 2 a.m. over here. So yeah, that's still a thing. Uh, Anyway. This is the week that I started to work out again for the first time in forever. Oh, Yay for that. Awesome. Um, so <clears throat> this, week, uh, this week is a like uh, a week of long-awaited returns. We have Ryan back on the show. I start working out again, again, and that's about that all I can think of right uh, now. And and, uh, and me and and yes, you know, every time that we've talked about it, yes, you have been in the right. I need to just shut up. Quit whining okay. well, that, and, simply, st- and just get back to watching because, Game of Thrones. That's simply because um, I have asked you if you were able to rewatch Game of Thrones uh, before the new season starts so that you can be on our Game of Thrones review show that we actually want to do a month from now. So, guys, hey, shameless plug, look out for that a month from now when Game of Thrones returns. Um, and then, like, I, I asked you that, like, months ago, and then you were like, okay, I'm trying to see if I can get there. And then, like a month later, I ask you again, and you're still like, "Okay, I'm because trying then, to see." If I can because get then there. I was, you know, doing my job. <laughs> then the, you uh, finally started. Good for yes, you. <laughs> yes, I finally started. I'm, 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 I'm five episodes in now, and oh. we're we're just at the start of my favorite bromance in all of television. Uh, yes, Tyrion, Bronn, God, I, I love you both just so much, <laughs> so much. Yes. Is there room for a third in that bromance? <laughs> Uh, Tyrion is my second favorite character, I believe, in Game of Thrones, and Bronn is in my top ten at least. So, yes, I agree. <laughs> nice, nice. But yes, so now we're all here. We're all, you know, and and the guys, this is a first in dedicated art history where all <gasps> four people are actually on the same Skype call doing a show together. Let's set the precedent. Let's yes. let's make history. Yes, 
Yes. Yes. As I celebrate yes. with with a glass of my usual scotch. It's my only drink for the night, though. <laughs> Uh, hey, keeping it classy absolutely keeping it classy so jonathan peck always great to see you in the chat how's it going man tell me how your week has been and obviously you know if you got a fun fact let us know Ooh, what well, hello we have a new person in the call tonight looks like uh lori bug 1967 Con- thank you for thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoy and the show. congratulations congratulations for being here because it's a party Absolutely. It's a damn party if <laughs> there was one. And what better way to start off a party than at least for Ryan, Case, and myself, talk about uh, an actress that we all love uh, who just got, who is currently in negotiations to play one of the most iconic actresses of all time in the upcoming Andrew Dominique biopic, Blonde. Yes, I'm talking about Ana de Armas, who you guys would know her work from War Dogs. You know her work from Knock Knock. You'd know her work from Blade Runner 2049. And she is going to be playing Marilyn Monroe. I'm sorry. Sign me the hell up. I'm looking, I'm so looking forward to this biopic. This is going to be incredible. Ryan, what are your thoughts? It's interesting. She's going to star as a famously blonde actress. <laughs> who starred in a movie called Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And it's going to be in the movie called Blonde, and she's a brunette. But that aside, I love She's her. Latina. <laughs> yeah, she's from, like, Colombia or something. I can't remember specifically. My apologies. But you know what I do like about it? She's a great actress, and that's really what matters. I mean, she doesn't have, like, again, like Marilyn Monroe was famous for her very specific body type in the fifties and all of that, like really there's no physical resemblances here, but I really don't care that much. I just don't care. Like if it's a good movie that tells a very interesting story because the girl Norma Jean had a very interesting story. So I'm surprised it's taken this long for there to be a movie about her career and her early life. So, and her later life too. So yeah, anyway, yeah, well, and speaking of, like, sure, we, we had something like that with uh, Michelle Williams playing her in uh, My Week with My, My Week with Marilyn, which was uh, Eddie Red, or no, Miles Teller. Miles Teller uh, yeah. was also in that with her, and and oh, that was a really great movie. But, uh, Case, you hear about this, and as an Ana de Armas fan, fan, fan wow. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Give, give me a Fanta. I'm not out of my fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. But case, what are your thoughts on this? Um, like I, I, I adore her in Blade Runner 2049. She is arguably one of the best parts of that movie, uh, especially her character Joy and what she brings to the main character of Ryan Gosling. But, um. And I've seen it in War Dogs, which she was good in, when, but she was a supporting role as well. And that makes me wonder, I haven't seen her lead movie yet, especially not as big as Marilyn Monroe. That's kind of a big role. And she, like, Ana de Armas, she's a good actress from what I've seen, but I don't know if she can lead a movie where she is supposed to play a blonde American woman when Ana de Armas is a Latina. That kind of... I don't know if that fits. So, look, I'm interested, and I think that Ana de Armas is good enough to pull that off based off what I've seen, but I'm hesitant. I'm not really sure. Um, we'll see. That's all I can really say. You know what? And that's, that's actually 100% a fair point. Uh, Nico, I know that you're still newer in the in, in in the film game especially in the classic film game but i'm a, i'm going to presume that you know through cultural osmosis you know all about marilyn monroe and how big of an icon she was now depending on your familiarity with Ana de armas do you feel she could be uh, suitable for the role so it, it's hard not to be familiar with marilyn monroe and who she is because yeah cultural icon as you just said uh, Ana de Armas, on the other hand, this is the first I'm actually hearing her name mentioned in any conversation ever. So for for me, uh, I can't really judge whether this is too big of a step up or if this is just the perfect role for her to start off uh, her, for her. her bigger career. Um, having, having said that, Sly Stallone, like uh, Rocky, 
uh, some could say that was a big undertaking for him, but he he pulled True. it out. And look at where his career went after that movie. So I feel like uh, I, I what did I say something? Yeah, I'll keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, we we've, we've been on call for like ten minutes and I already shit has hit the fun. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So so fill in the blanks for me. What years really? of Marilyn Monroe's career me. is this film going to cover? Considering Arnold Armas is about thirty. I was about to say no. This would probably cover around the time of films like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, where she was, you know, starting to really take off and really becoming uh, the actress that we that we know and love and have admired for the better part of sixty years now. So my understanding is it's sort of gonna maybe show what she was like behind the scenes, if you will. So this yeah. could, so this could essentially be a role in which, uh, in which, all she really has to do is act the way she's uh, acting in real life. Because th- if this is the, uh, telling the story of Marilyn Monroe's development into the star that she became, the same could be said for the actress playing the character. Like she could grow as much as she could grow as an actress in this part as much as Marilyn Monroe grows as a character in this movie. That's a good point. Absolutely, and uh, you know, and and Lori Bug sixty seven. I see you in, in the chat, and uh, yeah, this is sort of like Remy Malek taking on uh, uh, Freddie Mercury and seeing what that can do. So, look where that got him, and look where that got him. That got him the <laughs> Oscar. And to be honest, if this were to lead, this was the kind of film that would lead Andre Amas to Oscar recognition, not necessarily the win, but a nomination. Hey, pfft, yeah. I ain't complaining All about that. It. You know, even even if her uh, one of her big moments in Blade Runner twenty four nine was awkward as all hell, but it still looked really cool. Let's move on. To- it, it might have been awkward, but it was awesome, it was and really it's cool. it was extremely thought provoking, and that was what it I was. loved about that scene. It was, it was. But uh, now, you know, speaking of things that are a little bit awkward, but we're gonna, you know, take a load off our shoulders for once because now we finally got a full trailer for Aladdin. And you want to know something? I'm finally starting to get excited for this movie. I'm starting to let go of some of my uh, previous critiques. Like, now Will Smith doesn't look as bad as the genie. Now the effects don't look as bad as they did in the first couple of teasers. And you know what? Um, I'm forgetting the guy who's actually playing Aladdin, but he's actually not too shabby. And I like Naomi Scott uh, as, as Jasmine. Jafar... It ain't working for me yet, but who knows? Maybe it'll be good in the movie. But, you know, uh, I'm going to assume most of you guys didn't bother with the trailer because maybe we were so put off by the teaser. We were just. Uh, like, oh, I right. No, I definitely watched it, and I am hyped. Okay. So, so excited. First of all, I love Guy Ritchie. He's just awesome. He's not, yes. He's just a great, he's great, great director. I even liked his King Arthur movie. You know, it's not yes. amazing. It's not cinematic genius, but I think it's fun. And look, <laughs> it's never, none of these are going to beat the original 2D animated cartoons. That's just impossible. Even The Lion King, which looks so amazing and has maybe the greatest cast ever assembled <laughs> for a Disney movie. One but up. yeah, it's just not going to be better. There's no way. So in that case, might as well enjoy it for what it is. And this one looks a heck of a lot better than Beauty and the Beast did. I still haven't forced myself to watch Beauty and the Beast. I've tried, like, at least, yeah, I've tried twice and made it no further than, like, 10 minutes because it was trash. So at least this one looks like it could be fun. And I love Aladdin. So, yeah, I'm excited. Wow. Let's say Case and Ryan disagreeing on a live-action Disney film. Interesting, because he actually likes the 2017 Beauty and the Beast, and I think it's good. I guess uh, he also really likes Beauty and the Beast, period, though. Like, I, no, I don't he, no, 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 no. I'm not the love. biggest fan of the animated Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> uh, well, in any case, I think that this Guy Ritchie adaptation looks really colorful, and I, I like the acting from what I've seen so far. I'm seeing a couple of new faces in the chat. Uh, Brian Newsbaum, actually uh, seeing you a few times here. Welcome, sir. Uh, Randy Oliver, uh, first looks like a first time in the chat. Welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy it. 
And I'm loving the chats going alive. It's pretty cool. I'm nice. glad to see this. Uh, Nico, nice. did you see that? You, you, caught, you caught the trailer, right? So I'm actually avoiding the uh... Aladdin trailers. I avoided the first one, and I avoided the second one because... Well, obviously, hearing how bad the first trailer was, uh, uh, I, I wanted to avoid that because I didn't want wanted to spoil my experience should I go see this movie. And now I'm hearing good things about the second trailer, so I'm like, I don't want to jinx it. Uh, I, I want to keep it karmatically balanced of like, okay, I avoided the bad one, I avoided the good one, I'm just going <laughs> to go in blind and enjoy the movie for what it is. No, that's, that's a good idea. That, that, that's a fair point, and... Uh, Case, before I throw this to you, because you, you sort of gave a couple points, but I'm, and I want to get your full opinion after I get this out there. Uh, yeah. So we also just got – it also got announced this week that uh, I, I've noticed something in all the Aladdin marketing. We never heard Iago speak. Nope. Even though he actually looks really good, uh, I like – you know, I like that they pretty much kept it the exact same as the, as the animated version. But we do have a voice. And sadly, it's not Gilbert Gottfried because Gilbert Gottfried just makes everything better. But we got something close, though. We got something pretty close. <laughs> you know, uh, I think uh, fans of K2SO are going to be very happy to hear that Alan Tudyk is playing the role of is providing the voice of, of Iago Ooh. in this new version. So, Case, what are your thoughts on what has been the best droid in Star Wars canon being the voice of? Of okay, 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 okay. There are words said there that I might not agree with. <laughs> I, I loved K2SO, uh, and I think that Alan Tudor did a great job uh, at actually portraying the character. He didn't just voice him, he also did the entire uh, physical performance, which is amazing. Um, Alan Tudor makes everything better. Everything he's voiced in the last couple of years, I've loved, and I just am like. Put him in everything. He his his voice work that he does for these movies. Uh, yes, please. So uh, him as Iago. Yes. This trailer. I am not the most hyped for this, and I think I finally know why. Because I have liked the Disney remakes, uh, the live action remakes, the of movies that I wasn't the biggest fan of in the first place. I'm not the biggest fan of the Jungle Book. And I think that the live-action version improved upon that. I'm not the biggest fan of Beauty and the Beast, and I think the live-action version improved on that. I hate Cinderella because I, I like the animated version a lot. And I think that, yeah, what the live-action version did didn't improve upon that. I am okay with Maleficent because I'm not the biggest fan of Sleeping Beauty, but I do think that Maleficent is an interesting character that you can explore. It's just that the execution of the movie is... Not the best. It has a decent first half, but the second half is just... Ugh. No. So, with Aladdin, I love the original Aladdin um, the animated version. I've actually bought it to go see it in theaters when it was in a rerun a couple of years ago in, uh, in my theater. And that was amazing. Uh, so, I'm like, I love this movie. So, I actually don't want to see this remake. Uh, even though Guy Ritchie is directing it, but based on the trailers, there's nothing Guy Ritchie about this. If you want a Guy Ritchie movie, then I want Sherlock Holmes, or Man from Uncle, or heck, fucking King Arthur, which I also love, because I think that Guy Ritchie's take on movies can be very interesting and different from what they might originally be. But with Aladdin, I'm not getting any of Guy Ritchie's vibe, uh, vibe and I think that Aladdin looks bland, Jasmine looks bland, Jafar looks bland, and I'm not that looking forward to it. So it'll Haters come out. I'll see the reviews. We'll see. We'll Haters see. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see. And I'm, I'm, I, I am looking forward to it. But it's just, it's just gonna be one of those things where I'm gonna go in with as low expectations as I can because that's how I enjoyed Beauty and the Beast the best because I went in with no expectations. And I actually got a pretty decent film out of it. Uh, Brian Nussbaum, he brought up a very funny point in, in the chat. Alan Tudyk is becoming <laughs> the John Ratzenberger for Disney films. And you know what? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is 100% true. That I'm, is 100% true. That. You know, because, yeah, I'm Frozen, uh, Zootopia, Moana, and now this. Oh, it's like, Hey, Rogue One is Disney. Don't forget that. True, true, true. <laughs> true, true. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. 
but you know, and you're not gonna, but you're not gonna see me kicking and screaming when he shows up on the screen. Unlike, here we go, here right. we go. Okay, Game of Thrones fans, can I ask oh. a favor? <laughs> stop talking. Just, oh. just, 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 just stop talking. So literally, right before we went on air, um, Ryan asked me to talk about this, and you know what? We're, we'll, 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 we'll just give a quick mini rant on this collectively. First off, when you are actually when you were given enough information to know the runtime of each episode of the last season of Game of Thrones, but apparently that's still not enough. Screw you, okay? We'll know the we'll, we'll know all the times when like what the writers know what they're doing at this point. Game of Thrones is one of the most one of the most acclaimed shows in all of television history. They know what they're doing, so just. Shut up, let this last season play out, and we'll all end on a happily ever after. Hopefully? Case, take it away. Honest to fucking God, I I am actually very psyched for Game of Thrones Season 8, despite me not being the biggest fan of Season 7. But, uh, yeah, they actually gave us the exact runtimes of each episode. That's something that hardly any... Uh, TV show ever does but the reason that they do that is because hey we have longer episodes and we already knew th this was announced like weeks ago the first two episodes were about an hour and then the other four would be an hour and 20 minutes that's a very long episode that is a lot more television than uh, by the way I think any <laughs> TV show right now any TV show could give you I don't think there's any TV show out there that can give you an hour and 20 minutes of episode because there is no TV show like Game of Thrones. So I, I don't understand why the fans feel so goddamn fucking entitled. <laughs> oh, I want my longer episode of Game of Thrones. It's only... They were, we already knew for years, I think for like three years before season seven even came out, we already knew season seven would be seven episodes, season eight would be six episodes, that would be the end of the show. So I'm honest to God just wondering why people are feeling so entitled. Oh, I want my Game of Thrones episode to be longer uh, than 54 minutes. It's, Fuck be you. it's because they want, they, they don't want this show to end. Yeah. I also don't want it I was to end. Say, and, I'm okay with it. Like, I don't. I don't rant. Uh, you don't see me ranting everywhere on the internet about the uh, run times. I'm okay with the run times. And seriously, I'm ranting on the fans who feel so goddamn entitled about these. Oh, it's stupid. It honestly is stupid. That's. Uh, I'm Ryan, <laughs> take a Xanax. You'll be okay, Case. <laughs> ah, Xanax. Yes, yes. But no, Ryan. But, like you know, what are your? Yeah, I mean, I just I laugh at these people because like, how you know, boring can your life possibly be when like Game of Thrones is all you have in life? It's great. Don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite shows, but it's not like life or death. First of all, second of all, I don't know. When you, you play Game it. of Thrones, you win or you die. That's essentially what they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. I don't think anything's like reaching. This isn't ring, you know what I'm saying? So nothing's reaching out of the TV to attack you. But, um, well, yeah, anyway, until a big old dragon dick comes out and slaps you across the face. <laughs> I was going to say, or just, you know, Theon's uh, lovely wiener, which uh, you, you see as soon as season one. But Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that dicks aside, really what, what's important is that. <laughs> wiener, wiener, wiener. Yeah. Really wiener, 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 wiener. As I say to so, everybody in the chat, I apologize for the for the for all the wiener conversation. But uh, you know what, Nico, as you're uh, munching on your, uh, I don't know what that is. Ice cream? It looks like ice cream. It's a banana split. Oh, oh nice. I called it. Nice. Called it. Well, then uh, maybe uh, I'll, I'll. Do you do you have any thoughts you want to quickly give, or do you want me to just move on to the next story? Um. I'm behind on Game of Thrones. Fair enough. Okay, Ooh. so we'll move Skip on. him. He doesn't, Get cut off. he doesn't deserve to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about this next story because I didn't see this movie from 2017 called The Hitman's Bodyguard. Case, I know Anybody? you saw it and you... I'm like the only person who did. Go for <laughs> it. Theaters. Well, you have 60 seconds. <laughs> well, no, and the thing is... Uh, <clears throat> 
So there, there apparently made enough money to warrant a sequel, even though it was a modest hit at the box office and it was only modestly critically received. But it's getting a sequel and it's expanding the cast even more, including recent Oscar nominee Richard E. Grant, who will be appearing in a movie that will come out at the end of this year. I'm very excited about. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. one of the sexiest men alive, Antonio Banderas, also will be added to the cast. Case, you excited for these titans of movie to come in? Look, The Hitman's Bodyguard, uh, at best, is an okay action movie. It has some fun stuff in it uh, where I think that um, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson play well off of each other, and that's fun. Um, but most people probably won't. like the, the biggest part that I liked it is because it was set in my home country. It's like the only blockbuster out of America that is actually set in the goddamn Netherlands. That doesn't happen that often. So that, that's something that I can be happy about, you know? Um, but other than that, the movie is fine at best, as I said. So a sequel, I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, Richard E. Grant is good. Ontario Banderas is fun. Really? Uh, oh, whatever. I don't care. Move on. <laughs> All right. You know, and uh, Ryan, Nico, did you guys have anything you wanted to add to this, or are we? Yeah. Okay. When? Uh, um, when are they announcing John Wick four again? Oh <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Hey, Parabellum yes, hasn't come out yet. <laughs> True. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So, uh, my 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 thought. I'm assuming that the first Hitman's bodyguard was about someone putting a hit on the Hitman, hence why he needs a bodyguard. So if there's a sequel, then that means the Hitman uh, going after uh, the Hitman did not succeed, so that's why there has to be a sequel. Uh, it's, a, it's about Samuel L. Jackson's character, who is in England, who is already in jail, but he needs to be uh, transported to the Netherlands, uh, to The Hague, where he needs to stand trial. And Ryan Reynolds is his bodyguard. That's what it's about. When it go fish here, when it go fish here... What's next? Yeah, yeah. What's next? Let's move on. <laughs> I, tried, I tried to make a, I tried to make a joke, and okay, that's, that's all right. That's fine. That's away. fine. Right. Everyone's entitled to their little moments of um, actually. Yep. But as we move on to something that I'm actually very excited about, which is <clears throat> fifty years ago, one of the greatest children's um, educational programs came into existence. And that was Sesame Street. I, I I adore that show. And while they did have a 1985 theatrical film called Follow That Bird, and it has just one of the most heart-wrenching cry, cry moments you will ever see in a film, it wasn't that well-received. It was like still a pretty good film, but you know critics were just positive on it, and it was, didn't make that much, as much money as they'd like. But... It is. Uh, ha- it has just been announced that they will be giving it one more a go at a theatrical release because, hey, the Muppets made it huge in film, right? So now we're going to give the original program, which the Muppets came from, their own shot at actually being theatrical again. So, Nico, as you're wrapping up your Sunday, because you're you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're you're kind of like a kid right now. You're just you're enjoying your Sunday. You're having a good time. What are your thoughts on Sesame Street coming back to the big screen in 2021? Uh, my thoughts are I didn't even know it made the first appearance in the big screen. And um, I love, first of all, that we're talking about this right after we finished our Schmodown reaction where Ken Knapsack made a Sesame Street after dark joke. That, that was funny. And uh, <laughs> the timing of Yes, it the, was. The timing <laughs> of it is just perfect. But, um... Yeah, I was a Sesame Street kid. I watched it every day uh, uh, growing up, and it, uh, Elmo's World was my shit. And so, um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see. Uh, now, did they give any plot details about this? Not movie? really. Not not yet. Anyway, um, and as we get closer, obviously we will get a lot more of the information. But I'm just excited to see some of these characters that you know, much like yourself, I also grew up with. You know, and I want to see if maybe they'll they'll have a little fun with it. Like, for example, Ryan, I know you and I would love the hell out of this. If there was a scene where a death metal band plays with <laughs> Cookie Monster as the singer, I'm down. come on, I'm come down. on. 
<laughs> I want it to be um, Bulls on Parade. Yes! <laughs> That's the only thing I will accept. Oh, that or Master of Puppets. <laughs> oh, the full eight minutes of Master of Puppets. I would, I would dig that. Oh my god! But that's really, to be honest, Sesame Street. I mean, it's cool, and I'm sure if I ever find someone that's dumb enough to have kids with me, then maybe it'll matter. More. <laughs> but, but then, you know, sorry, I'm just not that hyped. I'm more hyped for the other thing that I know you want to rant about. Oh, yes, and look like, at that can moment. I, can I introduce it, and then you can rant it? Case, did you have any thoughts, or you just wanted to go? Let me go. go on my know what Sesame Street? Is. Oh, just go, Chris. All right, Ryan, <laughs> set me up, baby. Here we go. So, baby, ladies and gentlemen, grab your popcorn, grab your grab your drinks. It is rant time, motherfuckers. So, you know, 1950s cartoons, 1940s, 1950s cartoons—they're amazing. We love ourselves some some Pink Panther and some Speedy Gonzalez. Oh yeah. But by and large, the best one is Tom and Jerry. Just masterclass yeah. in humor. In fact, that's something I still watch Tom and Jerry to this day and think really? it's hilarious. Yes. It's wonderful. So, Chris, tell me, if I pitch to you, right, you're you're an executive, right? Okay. And and I pitch to you, hey, I'm going to make a Tom and Jerry movie. So I know you're here to perk up. Oh, shit, Tom and Jerry movie. All right, okay. <sighs> but listen here, right? It's not your average Tom and Jerry movie. We've had those. We've done that. No, this one's going to be CGI. Okay, CGI. Too. And live action. Go. No! No! <laughs> yeah, live action? You know, that doesn't sound like Tom and Jerry. Yeah, no, because the fucking Tom and Jerry movie itself was not Tom and Jerry. Because first off, first off, you know what they're going to do with this movie? They're going to make Tom and Jerry talk. Tom and Jerry do not fucking talk. Second off, they're going to make them friends. And no, Tom and Jerry are not friends. We already made this mistake. It was back in 1993, and it sucked. And then the worst part about this is you know for a fact that every single decision made in this movie is just going to pad out the timing, and it's going to be like this two-hour-long movie that's going to... They're going to say, oh, well, get ready for the next Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> no! It's going to be awful. And Warner Brothers, just when you were starting to get on my good side again, I hate you Betrayal. so much right now. <laughs> uh, <Ugh. laughs> Yeah, okay. it's stupid, man. Like, it's, it just makes no sense whatsoever. No. As Like, if you wanted to do... A, a, like a genuine CGI animated, like 90 minutes and, and make it like vignettes. You know, you could yeah. make it like, here's this little scene and here's this it, little thing. And essentially this little like, thing. like, like, well, kind of like how they used to do it back, back in the forties and the fifties where, yeah. you know, they, they'd show, uh, you know, two or three strips at a time or they'd show them mm -hmm. in between movies. Like yeah. let's say, let's say you go see uh citizen Kane, but you want to stick around to see, um, how green is my Valley right afterwards. They'd play a Tom and Jerry cartoon in between that. Yeah. So, but why? Why I mean, a full you could do, length? You could do four 20-minute CGI episodes, and they're just sewn together like a Ballad of Buster Scruggs or any other anthology film. And, and, and then and that, that could actually would be work. amazing. I would watch that. That, that would, would be hilarious. That would work. You, you and know, use classical music like they would always do. That would be so cool. I would be yes. down. Yes. Yes, but and no, but, that's but, not what it's gonna be. That's not what it's gonna be. It, it's it's gonna be just awful, and it's going like and and the worst thing is like I'm pretty sure that just like the original Tom and Jerry movie, there will be a song about them saying, "Oh, we're no longer enemies because we two are friends to the end." That movie scarred me for life. <laughs> oh, but it did give me one of my favorite quotes whenever I'm bitching about Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> and it's. Tony oh. J, one of the best voice actors of all time, saying, but we've got to have money, which is the only reason this movie's getting fucking made in the first place. <clears throat> Screw you, Warner Brothers. <laughs> <sighs> but it could be good. It could be good. No, it, it won't be. No. But, it be. <laughs> but it won't be. It won't be. But you never know. <laughs> I mean, you know, here, L Lori Bug 1967 uh, brought up uh, that, you know, they, say, saying they need to do a live-action Bob's Burgers. You know what? I will happily watch a live-action oh, Bob's see. Burgers 
That's over yeah. Tom and Jerry any day of the week. Hell, you want to know what I'll watch even better? I'll watch a live-action Bob's Burgers that's a crossover with Archer before I'll you know watch what? this. I want, see- <laughs> I, want see- I want to see H. John Benjamin with the biggest, fakest mustache. Like, you can tell that shit is fake, and he just goes the whole movie with his fake-ass oh, That would be awesome. And I want to see Kristen Shaw at her actual age and height with the bunny a hat on, playing a six-year-old girl. That would be fucking hilarious. Make that. Make that, rather than make this fucking Tom and Jerry nonsense. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh. Okay. I, I think I've got that in my system. Thank you all for, for bearing with me on that. Guys, yell back. It could have been way worse. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, like if this if this was me two years ago, I would I I I'd still be about two sentences into my actual in point. Better place. Chris is in a better place. I am in a better place these days. So thank God for that. But <laughs> but speaking of uh you know things that just don't make sense as to why they're being made. Uh okay. So there's a Redwall adaptation. Oh sorry sorry no. I mean there's a Redwall adaptation. God damn it! Why do I keep saying that? A mouse guard. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. To give a little context here, uh, in 1986, uh, British author Brian Jakes created basically Lord of the Rings, but with woodland animals. It was called Redwall. Great series. Awesome. Love those books. Then in 2006, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the original creator, but basically us Americans, we have to take what British do best and make a crappier version of it. <laughs> Which is essentially what Mouse Guard was. And yes, do I know it's because I read some of those graphic novels? Yes. And I didn't like it. I did not like it. It was essentially like if, um, oh shit, what was the name of that movie with Hayden Christians? I, 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 it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Outcast. There we go. It was like if Outcast was woodland critters and they had like a sort of a robin hood aesthetic to them the disney version which granted i love that disney version but ah man this 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 comic book just doesn't fucking work and now they want to make a movie of it with um uh, thomas whatever the hell his last name is i call him sam from love actually but he's uh jojen reed in um game of thrones yeah and andy circus any any cameos in the force awakens he does? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, what, when Poe po and, uh, po and Finn are in the TIE Fighter, he's the one saying uh, that uh, we have an un... Oh! Oh! Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, right, that's cool. Right. 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 Nice, okay. So, yeah, no, I, I didn't know that. But then, so, yeah, so you have uh, him and Andy Serkis are going to star in this thing, and it's going to be <laughs> mocap. Obviously, like, still animated, so it's going to have sort of like a Hugo vibe to it, which, yeah. Drink. Watch it from Babe 2. There we go. <laughs> Finally <laughs> got the quote. <laughs> but I don't want this movie because there's nothing appealing about it. You know, if you're going to give me this story, why don't we just make a CG animated television series based on the original source material that Mouse Guard clearly stole from and just make that. Simple. I mean, it could be a rights issue, but I still... There's nothing really, usually, that money can't fix. Unless you're talking like Calvin and Hobbes, I guess. But besides that, oh, usually money can fix everything. That's gonna so, be a movie one day, and I'm gonna hate it. Well, no, I'm saying it's a good thing that yeah. Watterson never wants to sell the rights to that. So, look, I've never read Redwall. I tried to get into it, and and I never could. This is not for me. I, I'm not a woodland creatures guy. Um, I'm more of a Lion King guy. So if they make Robin Hood with lions, I'm totally fucking down. But until they do that shit, uh, no. I mean, they kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as the Mouse Guard, I like... I read bits and pieces of it when I was in somewhere in my life at, at some point, and I wasn't impressed by that either. So I don't really care about mice and and stuff. So don't make it, please. Just don't. It's a waste of money. Make something else that could be a lot cooler. Don't waste Andy Circus's time with bullshit like this. Thank you. 
Yeah, especially after the uh, not that good Jungle Book film he did. Oh, CGI and that is trash. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Trash. Case, do you have any thoughts or do you want me to just move on? I just want to say, if they're ever going to make a Woodland Critter movie, <laughs> then face it off. The seat of the season uh, eight Christmas special of South Park, A Woodland Critter Christmas, because that is awesome, and I need a movie out of that. <laughs> I wonder. And I it wonder. only comes once a year. I wonder if we'll make it through That's an so entire episode okay. that I'm on that we don't talk about South Park. That's my only request. No, just no, no. South, no. South Park's South always going to be a thing because no it's South awesome. Park. No more. You're done. Also, Cut bad. off. No one likes it anymore. No one watches it. No one I love more. it. I watch it. So shut up. <laughs> I, I, I I watch the movie. So I, I, I that's all I do with it though. <laughs> that's all I need. True. And you uh, use the music for our resistance movies. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I mean, hell, we named our resistance show after a song in South Park Make a Longer and Uncut. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, uh, Nico, I'm presuming you don't care, so I'll, I'll move on to. Uh... <laughs> there's there's nothing to see here. Move along, move okay. along. <laughs> so let's move on to the the last two stories uh, before we head on to the break, and let's start off with with one of the big bangs, Avengers Endgame <laughs> final trailer. Sorry. Nico, I'm start sorry. us off. Okay, so first off, to those complaining about spoilers. Listen, if you weren't going to get <laughs> spoiled by this trailer, you're probably going to get spoiled by the toy aisle at Target as you are just walking by looking for something for your child. Because that's basically how movies like this work. Is like, if it's not the trailer, it's the toys. It's the merchandise that spoils something for you. But that said, I still what feel like this trailer... <laughs> I, st- I still... Oh, God. I still feel like this trailer gave us a lot of nothing and everything at once. Uh, It keeps us invested in the movie, but still keeps everything close to the vest in terms of, like, what's happening and how we get from point A to point B to point C to point D. Uh, The only thing we really figure out is that Tony Stark makes it back to Earth. We don't know how, but we just know that he and Nebula make it back to Earth. Uh, Nakamura, Harloff. (laughs) <laughs> and if if that's the most uh if that's the biggest reveal of this trailer then it's a good trailer and if we're and especially if it's still getting this this much hype and discussion built around it fair enough case look this trailer shows nothing this tra- trailer shows maybe the first hour of a three-hour movie this <clears throat> Like, honestly, the the things we see is how the movie is going to start off, where, yes, a uh, big shock, Tony Stark and Nebula make it to Earth. Is anyone going to expect anything less? Do you expect them to die in the vacuum of space out there above Titan? No, of course not. So, honestly, like, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. Um it didn't show anything else, though, because, uh, first of all, it was a lot of flashbacks to the previous movies. So, first of all, it just starts off with stuff that we've already seen a million times in the other movies. And then it shows a couple of things that we've already seen in the previous trailer. And then it shows, oh, Tony Stark gets back to Earth, big whoop, and Captain Marvel is there. We already knew that. And that's it. So, honestly, this this trailer is just put out there to be on the forefront of people's minds like, hey... This movie is coming out next month. It's going to be fucking amazing. Check it out. And there's nothing else to it. Because honestly, the hype for this movie is already through the roof. What are you going to show? You don't need to show anything for this movie. People are already going to watch it. And it's probably going to beat the Avengers Infinity War weekend box office. Uh, Also, it was nice to see a bit of a Kate Bishop tease. I'm just saying there. hmm? I don't know who that is. Uh, the 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 successor to Hawkeye, like you see Hawkeye uh, teaching his daughter um, how to shoot a bow and arrow, like that. That's a little. Well, that's a nice okay, little. Okay, to be that's fair, she, she's toast at the start of the film. <laughs> she's dust. Still, it's still a nice tease. Still a nice tease. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Ryan, what were your thoughts on the Avengers Endgame final trailer? 
I think it looks awesome. I think it looks like a really well shot movie. I think that this trailer tells you absolutely fucking nothing besides that they wear some suits and there's like a crash or something. And yeah, people are going to die. So I don't really know what else you expected to happen. I mean, we still have zero plot details besides what we already know. The plot is they're trying to save the fucking universe, blah, 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 whatever. It's going to be awesome. Just shut up and watch it, please. <laughs> Shove your mouth full of some popcorn or I will. something. Do something. Just shut up. Put your thumbs away. Stop getting on Twitter. You don't need it. You're fat and lazy. Go outside. Exercise. <laughs> this is a movie. This is a movie. Then, shut then the come fuck back. up. Shut the fuck That's up. It's just a movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want, if you want to talk, catch me in the gym. I'll be working out. Until the movie comes out, that's where I'll be. Now when it comes out, I'll be in the movie theater, and you can talk to me about it after the movie. Ryan, I missed you. I missed you so much. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have some great philosophical thing to say. But... <laughs> well, no. To be fair, that, that, that to, to everybody who's like you know crying bitching about it, yeah, that's all it really is. Just shut up, because mm-hmm. you're gonna go watch the movie regardless. Even if you're gonna do it to hate watch it, you're gonna go watch it regardless. So just shut up, and enjoy this movie. And you know what? Put popcorn in your face and pay for the goddamn ticket because that's what they care about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or if your ticket's so... downloaded off the internet, you know. Oh. I paid for my ticket for Endgame. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I actually have plans to go to Amsterdam for this because that's where they have an IMAX theater and go see it in IMAX. <laughs> you know, that's pretty badass. That's and pretty then, badass. you know. Take a little detour to the red light district afterwards. You're good. <laughs> I have a girlfriend. Yeah, we, you do know Aria probably... listens to this show, no. right? <laughs> uh... Then she knows how stupid I am. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, but she did. She knew that already. Yeah, exactly. Oh, That's shit. All right. That's my All, boy. Right. All right. Let's move on to the well, final. We want to fight. We'll fucking fight with lightsabers. Plastic lightsabers. Yes. I will, Ryan, you know I will happily <laughs> fight you with a plastic lightsaber <laughs> any day of the it. week. And you want? I'll even uh, I'll even go dual wield on you. I was gonna say I call dibs on Darth Maul though. Oh, okay. So we'll make this real interesting. Gotcha. All right. So we're gonna move on to our final story, and this is breaking news just as of today. So let's rewind the clock a few months back before this channel was even a thing. James Gunn gets removed from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three because of no, we some... talked about it. No, no, we didn't. We no, we, we didn't talk about. It. We didn't. We didn't talk about it. I don't it. remember talking about it. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. No, I didn't say anything. Tess <laughs> can see the future. How does it end, Tess? How does it end? Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, yeah. So, uh, a few a few months back, um, uh, James Gunn was, was removed from Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He was fired from Disney because of some, well, I mean, let's be honest, less than savory tweets from a few years back. But that's a really stupid thing to fire somebody over. But I don't know if it was just fan support or if it was the cast and crew really would not do the next Guardians film without him. Uh, but sure as shit, James Gunn is back to direct his written script for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, Case, because I know that you are the most typical Guardians fan out there where you love the first one, <gasps> hate the second one, and so you probably have mixed feelings on this right at this <laughs> point it, it's like just you know the fact that they made that decision in the first place just fuck off fuck off i um, i wasn't okay with it when they uh fired him for honest to god bullshit reasons I loved it when James Gunn essentially gave them the finger and said, fuck you, I'm going to direct Suicide Squad 2. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the other uh, thing. Um, and now they're like, oh, no, but we want you back because everyone wants you back. Yeah, no fucking shit, Disney, or whoever runs this shit. Did you figure that out just now? You fucking blind pieces of shit, Christ. I'm honest to God just wondering why... Why they went back on that decision after making a decision in the first place? I I don't, I don't know. It's like, uh, y- yeah, um, let him do Guardians three. Uh, I hope it's better than Guardians two because Guardians two sucks. I hope it's uh, close to Guardians oh. one. 
because uh, Guardians 1 is awesome and I love it. And I, like, honestly, they can do the Guardians well because they did it in Infinity War. The Guardians that I loved from the first one, we got to get in Infinity War. It's just that for some reason they forgot about that in the second movie. So I'm like, if you can just ca recapture what we got in the first Guardians or Infinity War for the third one, yay. If you do the second one again, no, I'm out. <laughs> Okay. Now, say, Ryan, you got a little uh, a little heated with some of Casey's comments there, but what are your thoughts on James Gunn coming back to do Volume 3? It's the, it's the right thing to do, and it's a rare case of where a, a business or a leader, whoever the leader is that is in charge of this decision, <laughs> making the right decision to go back on what they did in the first place that was wrong because, yes, he should not have said he should not have tweeted what he did. It's it's not... Look, if you're a professional, which he is, and you're in the eye of a lot of people, which even then he still kind of was. He wasn't famous like he is now, but still, I mean, you don't want to put certain things on the internet, even if you think it's really funny at the time or whatever, because it's just... Even we shouldn't do it, because if you want to get a job, anyone can see that. So you don't want to misrepresent yourself. So he shouldn't have done it, but the right answer is not to fire him because of something that he said way back. And then he said, hey, I'm sorry. He's already apologized. It's like the whole Kevin Hart thing. How many times do people have to say fucking sorry for shit? It's stupid. If you say sorry, fucking that's it. It's over. You can't do anything besides say sorry. You can't go back in time. Oh, I'm going to build a fucking time machine and go back to when I shouldn't have tweeted those tweets. You know, like it's so stupid. So thank God he's back. And... It may not be perfect, but it doesn't really matter because nerds win because you're going to get another shot at possibly having a good Suicide Squad movie. God only knows. If Case's real worry is Guardians of the Galaxy 3, then I have bad news for you because it has way more chance of being better than Suicide Squad 2. I can admit that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 isn't the best movie ever, but it doesn't have to be. It just has to be good. And it is good. It's not great, yeah, it's... but it's good. In case you don't know everything. You know something. <laughs> and also, listen, not everything is funny to everyone. And I like it because it makes me laugh. And also, I think some of the humor is also specifically tuned. Like, I'll watch some British shows and I don't fucking get the humor because I'm not fucking British. So James Gunn is an American. It's basically just a bunch of American actors. So maybe a lot of the humor just kind of appeals to certain people and certain, like my mom, she doesn't think it's funny. Oh, well, that's no great loss to me. I think it's hilarious. So yeah, I am excited and thank you, Disney, for doing the right thing. Fair enough. Now, Nico, I've noticed you and I have not taken off our shades yet. Why is that? Because <laughs> uh, I just have a feeling someone's going to say something heated, so there's no point in me taking them <laughs> off. <laughs> but... Uh... Uh, but, uh, okay, so my contribution to this discussion, uh, there's one big winner here and there's one big loser in, in this. Uh, and first, uh, the big winner from this news, simply because of the timing of this news, is Dave Batista. And the reason why he's the big winner is because, and I say this as the lone watcher of professional wrestling on the channel, but uh, this past Monday on Monday Night Raw, they were teasing his match for WrestleMania with Triple H. Oh, they were setting right. it up by, yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by, by Batista just screaming into a microphone telling Triple H, give me what I want, give me what I want, give me what I want. Part of what he wanted was a match with, uh, was a match with Triple H at WrestleMania. But the other thing that he wanted that he did not get a few months ago but is now getting is James Gunn to come back to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So essentially he got everything he wanted this week. Uh, the big loser of this, however, is Mike Saranovich, the right-wing pundit who got James Gunn fired from this movie to begin with. Uh, he yeah, like this guy has uh, a track record of trying to get uh, people f uh, fired and using their tweets against them, uh, uh, causing misunderstandings that just result in people losing their job for literally no reason. He tried to do the same thing with Sam Cedar and almost got him removed from his MSNBC position. Uh, thankfully, uh, they went back on that. And Sam Cedar, as far as I know, still works for MSNBC every now and then. Uh, but still, Mike, Sar Mike Saranovich is a bad guy. 
uh, who tries to hurt good people because they say things uh, uh, he doesn't like about Donald Trump. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Sarah Novich now has something to cry about once again because James Gunn is once again employed. Okay. Um, does anybody have a tinfoil hat they want to spare me after <laughs> listening to that? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah let me go I have literally no idea what you just said. I have no idea what you just said either, Nico. <laughs> like, you know what? I mean, and to be fair, you might be right, but. Uh, or you might be left. Who knows? Hey, oh. Hey, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm very left. I'm very left. That's and and that's fine. But no, um, you know it. It's one of those things where <laughs> I'm I'm. <sighs> look, kind of like case. I don't give a shit because to be honest, the the two the two films of the Guardians of the Galaxy are just eh. In my opinion, like, yeah, they're fine. They're, they're you fine. suck. I fuck off. I'm flying to Minnesota to be your fucking ass. Not really. As I was say, you know what? If you did that, <laughs> I would actually let you kick my ass. If you actually did that. <laughs> but, and then at the end, you're like, have fun wasting your five hundred dollars, bitch. And then you're just like, no, walk away. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> you know. Um, but I don't. I don't know. It just. Eh. But that's because, you know, crit, like the cast never really appealed to me as strongly as it does for other people. The James Gunn, I like his stuff that's not comic book related. Sorry. Sorry. Did sorry. You like sorry Super? Fans. I like it fine. Yeah, I was all right. Was you know, but I but I love Slither. <coughs> I love Slither. You know, and yeah, this well actually you know what, here, let's rewind the clock two years because I remember just as I was coming out of the out of out of seeing Guardians 2, I remember hearing that James Gunn was supposed to be overseeing the Marvel Cosmic Universe. And there's been Yeah, no, what happened to that? There's been nothing heard of that since. Strange. But I don't know. Is him coming back gonna start those talks again now? So that's what I'm curious about. I mean, I'm hoping that we see oh, Cosmo. The Russian dog. That would be something interesting. And you can oh, – I'm, I'm dead ass. I am so serious right now. I want that so bad because dogs are cute and Russians are well, – well, Russian dogs are cute. And there's some, some – Russians Russian, suck. Some Russian women are, are cute too. But anyway, mainly I'm being serious though. There is a lot of stuff that like spins off from that that you could do because, I mean, sure. heck, there's even a Guardians of the Galaxy storyline where <laughs> Venom is like – sort of an anti-hero alongside the Guardians. Like, you could... I, I'm not saying they have the rights for that, blah, 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 whatever. I really don't care about all that stupid stuff. I'm just saying there's a lot you can do. And so James Gunn, even if you don't like everything he's ever done, he at least knows how to plan out, like, things, like yes. actual things. He knows what he's yes. doing as a writer because he <laughs> got his start in Hollywood as... Uh, Oh, I can't remember the technical term, but basically just rewriting scripts and making them more better. So, you know, that he knows how to write. So I don't see why not have him write more stuff. Chris, pay attention. Uh, <laughs> I was almost break time. Let's go. Come on. We're almost there. <laughs> I was checking the chat. I was checking the chat. But um... can I can I propose a question? Yeah. So if, if James is now back to work the – cosmic side of them of the mcu will it be in the form of movies after guardians 3 or will it be more centered around disney plus as like tv series that would be, nah, awesome. would be movies. movies movies but it would be he'll, awesome. he'll, he'll he'll essentially be like the kathleen kennedy of 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 that particular universe to you know kevin feige if that makes yeah. sense so, with that, um, we do have I, – I have one more thing that I, I just want to talk about for just a minute or so, and then we're going to go to break. And I wasn't planning on it, but this is something that I do take very seriously. So, he, I'm even going to do you all a favor so that the camera is just focusing on me as I just give this little piece that I uh, I had prepared for – in, in, in um, sort of to – just give give my my two cents on the tragedy that happened in New Zealand last night. So I'm gonna start off by just saying that 
Uh, I believe under no circumstances do is it required to take someone's life. There's always a choice to it. To the man who decided, who made that choice to end the lives of 49 people because he decided that his conviction of anti-immigration was so strong that he had to do it, that he had to act on his beliefs. (coughs) Sir, no one is going to remember who you are 20 years from now. All that's going to be remembered is that 49 husbands, wives, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, grandparents won't get to see their loved ones again. They won't get to experience a day of life again because you chose to make that decision. Now, I have someone who I once considered a friend who lives in Australia, where you originally reside from. And while politically and ideologically, he, he leaned a little bit more towards your side. But I can promise you this. He would be livid with you. Just for the mere association that he's from the same country that you are. And whatever punishment you receive for the actions you've committed will not be enough. Especially not to someone like me who values human life above almost all other things. So, guys, sorry to end this uh, hour on a serious note, but uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in five minutes, and we're going to just have some fun talking about a series of movies that we all love and the direction, where they're going, and also what we're expecting. Not expecting. What we're hoping, maybe a little bit of speculation, but what we think this last chapter is going to close out this trilogy with. Can I say just... One thing before we go out uh, on a little bit more positive note about Australia. This weekend, Formula One is finally back in Australia, and it's awesome. So check that out. We'll see you guys when we get back. Yes. Uh, Yeah, I did not think we were going to see stormtroopers coming to arrest everybody at the end of this episode. That was right out of left field. But... In hindsight, the way that Tam was looking at Kaz as he was walking out of that secret meeting with Yeager and Doza, I can't help but wonder, was she the one that... She turned him in. Yeah. So, like... like, Tam, you... I was about to say, I I could throttle Tam right now. I could just throttle her neck and strangle her. I'm sorry. You don't, you, 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 why? Why would you rat everyone out like that, Tam? They're going to kill you. Not just, not just everyone else. You're dead too. Let's just clarify, we don't actually know if she placed out that call. No, no, we don't know. We don't know it, but come on. And the big hashtag around was, as part of a new progressive society, hashtag give Elsa a girlfriend. Is this a way that we can naturally do that? and still have it completely fit in with the lore established, I say yes. I think this could be a great way to do that. I've actually also been a supporter of that idea since I heard of it. I'm honestly wondering if she even needs a relationship. Like, uh, you know, this could... You have failed me for the last time, quarterback. Can you imagine? (laughs) Off the rails. <laughs> now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational shotgun play. I 
hope somebody makes a metal version. That would be great. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great. Yeah. I think we're just gonna go uh, straight from the end of this video into video two while we all yes, process yes. what just yes. happened. Uh, you can find him at uh, Dutch Movie Guy. You can find us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, at YouTube channel. You can find me at Skywalker Dolman. Um, and you find me dead. Bye. Yeah, I would say we'll, we'll see you later. Bye. Welcome back to the Who Cares Anyway podcast. We are back in the second half. Uh, you know, uh, as everyone's trying to talk shit to each other behind, during the break. Luckily, the you know, you guys can't hear the conversation because I haven't. I've again, I muted them as I should. I know I'm just I'm just the worst, Ryan. But uh, you know what you can do? You can uh, just very simply, as Bob Finstock once eloquently put it, "When it go fish here, when it go fish here." Yeah, I know you, and you got, and what I, I'm working on a way where we can get all my sound yeah, bites. Because I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When a goldfish here. When a goldfish here. When a goldfish here. Of course. I did. I, of course, oh, I was a goldfish. Come on, come on, Case. Come on. What? When would I not play when a goldfish here? Oh, by the way, you have your second cam and not me. That's funny. I, I do see that. And you know what? I'm going to fix it on the fly. Because <laughs> I'm just going to blame you like I always do. Uh, Actually, no, I'm going to blame Nico because uh, he was having technical problems during the break. God damn it, Nico. Right twice. Oh, look, there's two rights. Yeah, there are two rights. That's actually that's an upgrade. It's funny to see. We're live, and this is happening. <laughs> this is happening, folks. I see All some right. of cases. Now we're back. We're back. We're back. Hey. Please. Hey. But yes. Hey. So here we go. Now, we all love Star Wars. No. Yes. No, not at all. And it's safe to say that uh, much like anybody of, you know, decent thought, the ability to think for themselves, we have various opinions about the, about, about the two... Uh, Skywalker Saga movies that have come out in the last four years. And I I want to take a little time to talk about that because, you know, next month during the weekend we're supposed to talk about fucking Game of Thrones. Uh, we're getting our first trailer for episode nine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I had to, I had to poke, poke the bear one more time. Just one more time. <laughs> um, it just happens to coincide. <laughs> And, I didn't pick and, the dates. I, I know. Trust me. And, and, and if, if, if that wasn't the case, honestly, it would have been a two-hour show of just talking about the one fucking trailer. Yes. And it would have been of great. Of course. <laughs> but sadly, uh, you know, we, we, we do still have a regular show to, to, to do here. Now, let's let's go back four years ago. December 
15th or sorry december what was it december 18th something like that yeah. uh, i i saw it on december 16th <laughs> it was i remember day. that was friday so this okay was so 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 it was the 15th okay yep yep so I, I i took my folks to to the the mall of america biggest mall in america Ooh, ah. and we went and saw star wars episode 7 the force awakens in theaters and it was the first Star Wars movie in 10 years. I don't count the Clone Wars movie. <laughs> Nobody really does. No. I just consider it four episodes of the show. And, of course, I haven't seen trailers for months. I watched each trailer for months. I was watching speculation videos. Hell, this was how I discovered the schmoes. They're, they're speculation videos. And I loved them. But when all was said and done, I came out of Force Awakens. And I loved it. But I had some problems. As I think, you know, a majority of fans did. It was a return to form, which is what I was craving for. I wanted a movie that would wash away the problems of Phantom Mass and Attack of the Clones. Ryan, and to a certain mouth. extent, Revenge of the Sith. In case you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you could say that. <laughs> He's going to get really, really mad at you. Eh. I, 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 I can take her. <laughs> look, look you, you know, I think Revenge of the Sith is a good movie. I just think it has problems as well. Yeah, and, well, and to be fair, I do too. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, but... What was it about Force Awakens that excited us more than anything? Is that like rhetorical or no? Like I'm 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 actually asking. Like so before no. before you walk in before you walked into the theater and saw the new the first Star Wars movie in ten years, what was it that excited you the most about well it? If I can go first, I, I want to also share my experience on The Force Awakens because I had never seen a Star Wars movie in theaters, period. I don't count the Clone Wars. Uh, I still regret seeing it in theaters. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had never seen a Star Wars movie in theaters, and I was honestly a little hesitant when they announced a new Star Wars movie at first. But then we got that first teaser, and most importantly, I think I saw that first te teaser in IMAX one time mm. throughout 2015. And just the moment that you have that shot of the Falcon and the music, I was like, oh my fucking god, this looks so fucking good, I can't wait for this movie! <laughs> so, then you get a second trailer, and it's like, okay, this is starting to look really good. And the third trailer, I, I was... Rome. Exactly. Grown men cried, and <laughs> I cried. So we were getting to, to a hype level that I had never been exposed to. I, I didn't even know I was this hyped for this movie up until we actually got to it. And then it was Friday. I, I actually had to go to school that um, it, throughout the day. And then at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, I went to The Hague with a friend of mine to watch it in IMAX. And I was completely blown away by this movie. I absolutely loved it the first time I saw it. Then I had some rewatches. I think I saw it a total of 15 times in the theater. Yet the this is also because I had the uh, unlimited pass, which is which essentially doesn't uh, it says you only pay a monthly fee, which is not that uh, expensive, and you can go see any movie anytime when you want. So I just went to see the movie a whole lot of times. And after a whole lot of times, I still love it. I do think it is not the best Star Wars movie. Far from it, actually. Uh, it does have some issues, but it is a pretty damn good movie. Um, and I do think it's a return to form. And it started something new. It sparked a new fandom, and that's very important. That's true. Uh, Ryan, what, you know, what, what was it that got you excited? so excited? to see force awakens i mean so that first announcement i mean my entire family except for really my mom <laughs> loves star wars my sister loves it my brothers love it my dad me you know my dad was the my earliest memory is actually watching a new hope on vhs with my dad um so 
I mean, Star Wars is a huge part of my life. And I think that we all feel the same way as far as like, even if you like certain movies and then Prinkle Trilogy, blah, 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 whatever. I mean, my first Star Wars movie in the theater was Attack of the Clones. So, oh. which I liked at the time because I had a huge crush on Natalie Portman. So it was great. Who didn't? Uh, <laughs> True. True. So, no, but in all seriousness, well, that actually, that's true still. But and besides that, it was just seeing in the trailers, whoa, this is real. There's actually going to be another Star Wars movie. Han Solo's back. Luke is back. Leia's back. We're going to see it. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. J.J. Abrams, I really like most of his movies. I trust him. All of this. So my buddy and I, my, my friend Matt and his wife and then some other friends of mine and myself all went. We got there on Thursday night like at least five hours early. So we waited in the hallway for five hours. Like we brought food. We brought games. Like we had everything, man. It was awesome. And um, – Got all, there was a guy dressed up in full Kylo Ren outfit. It was amazing. I was jealous. And um, so we, we sat down and, man, from that first, bah, like, it was just, oh, my gosh. It was the most surreal experience. It's not a perfect movie. And even when I was watching it, there were certain parts that just didn't resonate the way I wanted them to. But it's a very good Star Wars movie. There's a lot that goes right. And my expectations were so high. I knew walking into it that there was no way it was going to meet them. So I kind of, but I didn't care because that honestly, it, it wasn't even necessarily about, is this the best Star Wars movie as much as it is this the best Star Wars experience I've ever had, which it was. And that was what mattered. And now, you know, I still love the movie. I still watch it all the time. At least, you know, I don't know, probably like every couple months I'm putting it in. So that that's what really matters about that specific time in my life for Star Wars was do, do, Star Wars do, do came back and it oh, was yeah. experience. Awesome. You know, <laughs> Nico, to be honest, I never don't think I've ever asked you about this. So tell me about your first time seeing Force Awakens. So strangely enough, my experience is a little similar to cases. Uh like I was a little late to the Star Wars party. Uh, and when I finally got on, I made up for a lot of lost time. But the first uh, but the first movie I saw in the theater was The Clone Wars. Uh, and, you know, I was of the right age to think, okay, I, I, can, I can get behind this. And then now that I'm older, I realize, eh, okay, th this is not that great. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Force Awakens was, like, my truly first time getting to see a Star Wars movie in the theater. And so when that moment came, I, re I remember I bought the tickets weeks in advance. I bought two tickets. Months. One from... Uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember back that far. But uh, I, do, <laughs> I do know I bought, I bought two tickets ahead of time. One for me and one for a friend. Wasn't sure which friend was going to come with me, but I was going to make sure that a friend came with me. It ended up being my buddy Mike. Uh, and uh, we went in there... Uh, we got seats on like the side of the theater uh, because we, you had to reserve them, and that was what was uh, available, I think. But uh, we got our seats, we sat down, and it was the Star Wars movie that I think we needed to really get ourselves back in the mindset of like, we're going to be getting these uh, often now. Um, obviously... I have some complaints, but uh, a lot of the things that I complain about the movie for are the same things that I praise the movie for, which is, uh, uh, as Case mentioned, it's a return to form. It, it repeats a lot of the beats that we loved from the original trilogy. Uh, some of them we like, some of them we dislike because of the fact that they're being repeated. Uh, but, you know, I think this, it, for The Force Awakens was, in my eyes, the, the right way to bring uh, uh, Star Wars back into the forefront and also uh, when in doubt having a Lego video game is always nice to help improve your experience always so, always yes <clears throat> yeah so okay I know something that everybody has brought up is that we all have <coughs> we all have at least one issue 
with the movie in some way, shape, or form. Like, as much as we all may have had the perfect experience, because I know I did with my parents. I, I That was just one of the coolest nights of my <clears> life. <throat> just hanging out with them and, you know, taking them to dinner beforehand. And, hell, I even booked a hotel room for them to stay in and for myself as well because I knew I was going to see it twice in one night. I knew I was going to see it once at 7 o'clock with them, and then I was going to go to the midnight showing by myself because, <laughs> yes, that was my that was my treat to myself. But, you know, yeah, I also do have my, my issues with the movie. So real quick around the horn, here's what I want to do. I want everyone to give – one big thing that they praise about the movie, but I also want to give, but I want them to uh, come out, or sorry, I want them to give one critique of the film, but then follow it up with one big appraisal of the film. I'll start us off here. My first big critique is Han's death. I don't like it. I don't like it in any way, shape, or form. I thought it was handled sloppily. I thought Kylo shouldn't have killed him. Grant, I knew he was going to die in this movie, but I didn't want him to die at the hands of his own son. Because, positive, Kylo Ren is one of the best villains in all of Star Wars, and this movie alone is why. Adam Driver's performance, the way that Kasdan and J.J. wrote his character in this, in this film... And the fact that essentially he was playing another version of Anakin, but a more accessible Anakin version. done well, as a lot of people say. <laughs> Which I I know I'm very much in the minority on Hayden Christensen, but that's neither here nor there. Yes, he's a more accessible version of An- of what Anakin should have been to a lot of fans' eyes. So, Case, would would you give me a critique and also an appraisal? Okay, a critique is... uh, I I can either go for something that overall is against... Like, uh, is hurting the movie for me, or uh, a scene. So, I'm really between the two. I think that... uh, you just gave a scene. I'll, I'll give something that overall is not the best of the movie. I think um, I love the themes that John Williams created for the movie. I don't love the use of them. And I think that John Williams did it actually better in, for example, The Last Jedi. And John Williams, we he has scored uh, eight Star Wars movies now. And he's about to score his ninth. And I think that, uh, like... The Force Awakens is not the best execution of his score, unfortunately, while because I do think that a lot of great themes come from this movie and they're used a lot better in The Last Jedi. It's just he probably didn't have the most time to finish that score. Uh, That's one issue I have. But on the flip side, okay, you mentioned my second favorite character of this movie, which is Kylo Ren, but my absolute favorite character start to finish in this movie is Rey, the protagonist who is just set up so well. Because what I absolutely love already about the scene that she's introduced in is uh, the fact that there is hardly any dialogue. Hey, George Lucas, you don't have to spot out exposition for your main character to finally make us understand what this main character is coming from. Uh, We can actually just show what she's doing. She is on Jakku. She's a scavenger. And that's what she's been doing for the past years, for a very long time at least. And the journey that she goes through in this movie that uh, she finds out that she has the force and what she can do with that. and uh, And then she's looking for her parents. Who are they? She doesn't know. Um, it makes it so interesting and it makes you question a lot. Uh, like it sets up a lot of questions, uh, but that makes her such an interesting character because she has the exact same questions that you have, because I do think that, uh, she is a a very good protagonist for the fact that, uh, besides the fact that she's a great character in and of itself, you relate to her, you understand what she's coming from. Um, and I will always just absolutely love that first scene that she's introduced in. That is like one of the few good uses of John Williams' score. Race theme in that scene is so beautiful, and I love that. 
and it just sets you up for a journey that is to come. And for me, that hooked me into the movie. Like, I'm on board with this main character showing what's next. So that's why I love uh, the movie and why I love Ray in the movie. Fair enough. Ryan. <clears throat> for a critique, <clears throat> I think that this is a relatively well-written Star Wars movie. I mean, Lawrence Kasdan's great, and J.J. is really good as well. But I think that maybe just the slightest bit of laziness as far as making another Death Star-like thing, I think that they kind of just hit upon it. or are like, oh, okay, like that's a good gadget to have, you know, the plot center around. It's, it's something for them to defeat, you know, and, and, and it looks cool and all of this. Um, but I just feel like, I mean, I haven't sat there and tried to think of it because I'm not getting paid millions of dollars to write a Star Wars movie. But I think that if I was, I would probably like really try to find something that wasn't yet another Death Star shaped thing. It works for the film, but I just feel like it's the slightest bit of laziness. And um, it just feels like, again, like kind of like, all right, been there, done that. Thankfully, however, there's the rest of the movie to watch. So <laughs> there's a lot of interesting, I think, what I like the most is seeing Star Wars brought into this generation of fans and, and done well. So basically just seeing updated effects and updated maintaining, I'm sorry, um, the practical effects, but in new and different ways. It's not the same sort of thing that we've always seen. And I think it just really is blended well together insofar as it looks like a Star Wars movie, but it also looks different. It's a different feel. It's sort of like coming home, but it's also different at the same time. It's really kind of a hard emotional uh, thing to explain, I feel like. But basically, it didn't feel like the prequels, where it was like really disjointed and felt totally foreign altogether. And a lot of the effects, I feel like, don't look even all that great except for maybe in revenge of the sith although there's still there's some stuff there that i didn't mm, think that was all that great I so disagree. <laughs> well i mean ultimately none of the effects are going to be as good as they are now just because of time so and, and i think that again seeing some of the practical effects that you see on jakku and stuff like that really helps um and i think one other tiny little thing that I liked was just the inclusion of Alec Guinness in Ray's vision. I think that was it kind of like struck, Henry McGregor. <laughs> right, yeah. But I think they struck on like a really ingenious piece of cinematic goal by the oh wait, we can take that one bit of him saying, Don't be afraid and just take the Ray part and now there you go, he's in the new trilogy, and I think that's really fun. That's a nice homage. That's a fair point. Uh Nico. Oh, what's a pick that you guys haven't already said? <laughs> There's a fair amount, bro. There's a fair amount. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah. So, first, my critique was going to be Star Killer Base. So, because, like, I like that they made it different from the original two Death Stars, but that doesn't change the fact that it's still a different version of Death Star. So it, it is kind of lazy in that regard. Um, but things I will praise. Things I will praise. I love, I love the... Being a martial artist myself, I love that how this particular movie starts a new evolution in terms of like uh, the story <clears throat> and legacy of lightsaber combat. Like we have the prequel trilogies that shows a lot of like the Jedi at their absolute best and the Sith at the, their absolute best when it comes to uh, swords, uh, swordsmanship. And then we go into the original trilogy where it's more uh, like it's more basic. They, they use a lot more kendo uh, uh, techniques. Uh, they, they stick with practicality as, oppo as opposed to showmanship. And now here we are in the sequel trilogy starting off a new era where like there's not a lot of formal training going on in terms of swordsmanship. So they're essentially just sort of like using Viking techniques of swinging it uh, uh, with two hands. Like it, the swords are really heavy to hold on to. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a story in and of itself. 
uh, uh, how the swordsmanship is evolving within each movie. Uh, and uh, I'll probably mention, I'll probably touch on it a little bit when we get into the last Jedi conversation as well. Um, but yeah, um, I just want to say one more thing about Ray to piggyback of, off of what Keith said. Uh, 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 despite what Max Landis might tell you, uh, Ray is not <laughs> a Mary Sue. Ray, Ray is not. He can Ray, shut up. <laughs> Ray is not a. Go back to writing Sue. great movies, Max. <laughs> oh wait, go back to being a millionaire, you stupid millionaire. He's never written a great movie. Chronicle. It's yeah, fine. Oh. All right, anyway, poor Nico yapping all over his fucking. <laughs> stuff. Sorry, sorry, Nico. Sorry, let's finish. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. She's not a Mary Sue. She is someone who has had to struggle. When you get dropped on a planet at age like five to nine years old, uh, uh, with with no idea who the fuck your parents are, and you, and you and you get uh, put into the custody of this guy who is going to make you work for the smallest amount of food, uh, uh, you, you you instantly put yourself in survival mode. You have to grow up. And she uh, is, and that's why she is so good with the staff when we first see her because. Even though we didn't see it on screen, she had to train how to defend herself against the rough, uh, against the rough spots of Jakku, against the ruffians of Jakku. Actually, some of that can and, already be seen in Forces of Destiny. Not a great show, but it can be seen. <laughs> I beg to differ. Uh, I think it is a good show, uh, but uh, that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Uh, and and also people also complain about how fast she became a, a adept to the force, to which I will say, and again I'm going to show that I am the only guy who follows sports entertainment <laughs> in, in in this panel. But uh, B J Penn, f- former UFC lightweight and welterweight champion, he got his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu within the span of four years. It takes the average martial artist 10 years to get their Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. So some people are just naturally gifted to the point that they can surpass everyone else in learning certain skills. And in a way, Ray is essentially that prodigy-like character. Uh, it, she felt something, and, uh, and the force called out to her, and there you go. She's making it up as she goes along. But she, uh, but she found that connection and she made the most of it in the short time she had with it. Absolutely, and you know, um, one other point I, I I will piggyback off. Of. This is not a critique of the movie itself. But this is a critique of what of this era of Disney of of Disney Star Wars. Now, say what you will about the prequels and the execution. Of those films. Because for the most part, I'll wind up agreeing with you. But the one thing that I don't think anybody can really deny. Those three films added so much goddamn lore to Star Wars. No. <laughs> we agree, I mean, we agree yeah, to there's a lot because... that There's a lot that carries on. Besides midichlorians, like, that's the <clears> only <throat> part that really gets forgotten. The rest of it... Yeah, there's a lot that carries Whereas, on. Whereas, I mean, the the show the show essentially spawned two two complete three series, because you had the 2003 Clone Wars, the 2008 Clone Wars, and then Rebels was essentially a spiritual successor to the Clone Wars, because it had a lot of Clone Wars characters and had to tie up some of those loose ends, but then also set up the original trilogy as well. They wanted to tie all trilogies together with Rebels. Pretty much. Now. One of the things that one of my personal critiques for not just Force Awakens or Last Jedi, but for the sequel trilogy as is thus far. Now, Night come out and prove me completely wrong, but in terms of which trilogy has done more to add to the lore to get me more excited about diving into the further details of Star Wars, well, I'm sorry. The sequel trilogy so far hasn't given me that much it's given me captain phasma's book which i haven't read yet it's given me resistance which i absolutely adore as a show but outside of that you know sure you had had the poe comic but i haven't read that yet it's also not that good 
Whereas, what did the prequels give us? They gave us Clone Wars. Rebels. They gave us so many other novels that were set within that time span. They gave us... Comics. Co- comics that are great. Yes. And bo- in both Legends and Canon. Yes. So... And again, I'm not saying this to be a douche to, to, to the sequel trilogy. But part of the reason that I, I think I understand why a lot of people are so negative about the sequel trilogy so far is that they just don't... They're just not seeing... Or they're just not getting that sort of feeling from... Or the, okay, sorry. They're not... Uh, that. That I th- I th- I personally think that the uh, Star Wars fans currently, at least the one that are the ones that are way too bitchy about it, are feel way too entitled because of the fact that we indeed like with the original trilogy, the 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 people um, have that trilogy already and have the prequels already and have all the media around it already because that media exists already in both Legends and in Canon because that's what also Canon is tackling the most. They're surrounding the prequels and the originals and uh, the time in between with comics and novels and whatnot. And they're waiting for the sequel trilogy to fully come out to fully give us uh, more of that. Uh, So they want to keep it a secret for now, which I get. And this is something that those fans probably don't understand because they weren't around back in 1977 when the first movie came out. And you needed to wait three fucking years for your next movie because that that's something that they just don't know. They've never experienced that. And I haven't experienced that either, but I'm okay with it because I can see what they're building up towards. And I'm excited for that because based off what I've got, I like it. So that uh, that's I think a difference between people that like, some people are just want instant gratification. They want everything now. Sorry, you're gonna, not going to get that, but they still want. No, it. You're, and, <laughs> and and to be fair, nor, nor should you, because that's just not how franchises work. But when it comes to the argument, at least at the moment <clears throat> of execution versus what it brings to the story, <clears throat> at the moment, <clears throat> I. You know, and then, which is also why I will never take Revenge of the Sith off of my number two of personal favorite Star Wars movies because it adds so much to the fucking lore. It adds so much to the overall story. And granted, you can say what you can bitch at me whatever the fuck you want about the execution of it. I don't fucking care. At Skywalker Doman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anakin is my second favorite character of all time. Come fucking fight me. I don't care. Anyway. But uh, Jonathan Peck actually brought up a great question that I actually want to bring to you guys real fast here. Cool, cool. Uh, Jonathan asks, do you guys think uh, some of the issues with the new Star Wars films is the filmmakers themselves that they chose to make those, yes. fil- those films? Yes. No. Sort of. And I- I'm-, I'm with Nico. Sort of. Because... It depends on what you think the issues are. I mean, everyone thinks different issues, you know, okay, has so- the same issues. So- so here's the situation. See, here's the situation. So obviously we, we got to compare the new Star Wars trilogy in a sense to uh, their brother, uh, to their sibling in the House of Mouse, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Kevin Feige had a game plan uh, and uh, he, he mapped out every single scenario possible for if something didn't work out. Like if an actor didn't uh, work, if an actor uh didn't take the role or if a director fell out uh, there were, there was preparation for every little thing and, and they made sure that the continuity lined up as best they could and uh, so much so that even uh, some of the stuff that got um uh retconned if you want to say uh, retconned uh, uh like uh, in iron man 3 where tony stark he blows up all his suits but then all of a sudden he's wearing another suit uh, in um Age of Ultron and Civil War, and we get that explanation in Civil War of, like, the fight wasn't over, so he had to put the suit back on. Uh, uh, With Star Wars, on the other hand, Kathleen Kennedy, uh, she took on the role of overseeing everything in terms of Lucasfilm. But she kind of maybe just focused on the movies and was like, I'll hire a good director, I'll hire a good director, I'll hire a good director, and just give them creative reign. And there might not have been a lot of 
um, communication between those directors as to how they wanted things to line up. They just, she was just like, okay, have JJ do number one, have Ryan Johnson do number two, and then have Colin Trevorrow do number three. Now we saw what happened with Colin Trevorrow, and basically his life just turned into a living hell after uh, Jurassic World and uh, that one indie film he tried to make on his own, his the passion project, which, yeah, the Book of Henry, which turned out to be a complete book of shit, uh, and <laughs> uh, and so he got thrown out of the picture, and JJ ended up having to become sort of like the cookies to this Ryan Johnson Oreo, uh, and. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> that is a fun analogy. I like it. Keep going. But, but yeah, uh, JJ, he was put in charge of starting off the trilogy in a, in a way that would get people reinvested in Star Wars. Then the job was put on Ryan Johnson to sort of challenge what we think a Star Wars movie is. Uh, uh, sort of picking up where Rogue One left off and that Rogue One was already doing that. And that was just mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson's job to do that in a Skywalker family film. Uh, and so now we've gotten it. Now we've gotten mm -hmm. through point B. Now it's time to get to point C, which now JJ is like, okay, I did the first bookend. Ryan Johnson put the books in between. So now I got to put up, put on the second bookend. How do I want to do this? And that's, that's a question we all have right now. True yeah, I mean, and I could not agree with you more because as great of a producer as I think Kathleen Kennedy is, she's terrible as a creative head. If if she had set Dave, oh, yeah. if she had set Dave as the head of creative from day one, would have been better. Oh my god. Would have been awesome. Can you imagine like like and the sad thing is I have to ask, could you imagine if these films were even better than they are, and sure if they too. had a solid narrative flowing throughout every single one of them. Because you want to know something that Dave Filoni can do? He can tell a goddamn story. Well, and he can plan it out over a long period of time, too. There's yeah. payoff at the several end. Several times series. with several shows yeah. already. Like, like, look at the arc of Ahsoka Tano. He's been able to tell her story in two <laughs> shows over the span of over a decade. And take and her like, from being one of the most hated characters yeah. in Star Wars to one of the most beloved female characters of all time across all mediums. Because not just I beloved, but hated important. her when I first saw her. <laughs> like, not just beloved, but important characters. Like, she is crucial now to the Star Wars lore because of what Dave Filoni has done for her. And sadly, I mean, outside of Rey, there hasn't been that much in terms of that. Cause sure, you had Finn, but as we'll get to in a moment here, he, that arc only has kind of half a payoff. And Poe, same thing. Kylo Ren, same. Okay, Kylo Ren's actually, eh, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. something else. <laughs> that's something else. That's just, ugh. Whoa. But yes, finally. Also, let's... you have to remember this trilogy is not finished. I, I know it's not finished, but yeah. the other problem is, as we now get into Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, this could have been a trilogy-ending film when you stop Shut to up. think about it. Like, essentially, we got two films in one. At least the way that I personally see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot that goes on anyway. You know, and and Ryan, I I know that you you have a lot you'd like to say. It's not a lot. It's just like three points, like short points as to why like it's not what I wanted. And I mean, I love Ryan Johnson. I'll just preface it by saying that Looper is one of my all time favorite movies, and I think he's an incredible writer. If you look at if you think about what has to go into writing a time travel movie. And I've read an article that went into all in depth on like how difficult, like how many years he had to plan that movie out. I know this guy can write. He's a good writer. But when it comes to, for whatever reason, whether it be just kind of going off to do his own thing and, and not really having, like Nico was saying, a consistent plan from the get, my first point is just there's inconsistencies in The Last Jedi. 
there was no definitive and coercive plan from the beginning of creating this like we could have had with a Dave Filoni as the creative head. So that despite if you lose Colin Trevorrow or uh, Ryan Johnson wants to change things here or there, you have a person to go to that's overseeing your entire story from start to finish and not creatively reining anyone in necessarily, but just making sure that things make sense as they're being told. Because Ryan Johnson, as a director and writer, has a lot on his plate. It's not, I mean, look at how difficult it was if you watch any of the hours and hours and hours of stuff about Peter Jackson making his two trilogies, how mm-hmm. like he had so many sleepless nights because he's just trying to get everything to work together. Now Ryan Johnson's working on just one of those huge films. Like there's so much going on. And I mean, whether it be also just tonal and kind of like you were saying, Chris, lore, like what it contributes, there's some inconsistencies there as well because I mean, again, it's fake, so I can recognize that it's fake, but it still needs to be somewhat consistent in its fakeness as far to as... To at least come across as believable and realistic and right. uh, like believing that we can actually be there ourselves. In this world, right. So if you... As cool as it looked, because it, it was a great moment in the theater, but when uh, Laura Dern's character uses light speed I'm to Lynn break Holden. those ships apart... Thank you, Admiral Hall. It just, it doesn't fit what we know about Lightspeed from everything else that's ever been written in Star Wars. So it's just inconsistent to what yeah, we I know think about wrong. how. It... Okay, well, I mean, watch watch Solo, and it presents a completely different way of how Lightspeed works. So it's not, it's not me, it's just that's, you can't be inconsistent like that. And this, my second point is relying too heavily on subvert, subverting expectations because that was what a lot of people praise it for and myself as well because it was nice to see Ryan Johnson's take. It was different and that's refreshing. But he just really relied too heavily on uh, like sort of gotcha moments, whether it be the Finn storyline never really going anywhere like, oh, this is going to be important and you know we're going to save everything. But gotcha, it really means nothing. And, and they go to... Justin Thoreau, right? That's that's the. I'm not saying that incorrectly. Yep. He should have been the code breaker. That would have been. I'm sorry, Benicio del Toro. You're great, but that's just not. It. You didn't have to set it up to be. It's going to be this really cool guy, but actually anyone can do it. Some bum in the jail cell, or he can do it too. It has to be this code breaker, or you know, a bum in a jail cell. And and Laura Dern's Admiral Haldo, thank you, Case, saying. Oh, you know, I have a super secret plan that you can't know. You can't know the super secret plan. And then the plan fails. I have a counter argument against that. Okay, well, just one second. And then the, and I, Case is going to hate me for it, but I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't think that the character of Luke is true to what George Lucas created. And I know guys don't like me, but listen to everything George mm. Lucas has ever said about the character that he created. And that is not the character of Luke. You should, your characters should grow and change. Over I have time. a counter. I have a counter. Boy, do I, I have know, a counter. I know, I know. We all have a counter. I know. You've all countered it before. But this is the thing as far as even if you want him to grow and change and you want him to be totally different, it's still not the same character. It's not, Luke, it's and, completely and, and, different. And now, and now, to be fair. To, it's just the same in name and look. And, and sorry to cut you out there, Ryan. But to be honest, right. I, I, I'll, I'll meet you halfway in saying that no, this isn't the way that they should have changed Luke. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's but 100% personally, I'm, saying. I'm glad that this was how they did. Because for the first time, for the first time in the entire Star Wars saga, I gave a shit about Luke. For Luke me, has a character. First, this was the first time that that's I actually saw point. Luke as a, as a character. Because okay, Luke but is supposed to be. That's not what he's there you. for. Exactly. Just like Harry but, Potter is not yeah, a great but character. Here's the, but here's the thing, though. He's there for you to be in his place. Exactly. But here's the problem. In the sequel trilogy, Luke is no longer that character. No. Exactly. He's not Luke. He's someone completely different. Anyway, but, 
it, 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 but, th- but that's the thing, though. We, 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 we turn into different people over time. And listen, like, yes, the, the, the loop that, the, the loop that you saw- I'm not the same asshole that I was two and a half years ago when I started in I understand that. But that doesn't mean the next thing that you have to do is as soon as you're given the lightsaber that people have been waiting so long for you to see handed to you, you then throw it away. And completely, again, it's just... At, whether well, you like it or not, I didn't like why that did either. He throw it away? I just don't like the subversion of expectations in order to elicit a reaction from the audience. I think it's lazy. See, the ones okay. that I do yes. like, the ones that I do like, are Snoke. He was put into being, oh, he's going to be this huge master, and but it's a gotcha because he ends up getting killed in one of the coolest ways I think ever. Yes. Raised parents, oh, raised parents matter so much. It's going to be Obi Wan Skywalker Kenobi, blah blah blah. Ah. No, it could be anybody because we're getting rid of stupid midi chlorians. It's just the Force. It's whoever can tap into it in certain ways, and and it's just. Sometimes if you rely, there's so many points in that movie where he relies on subverting expectations. And to me, it's just lazy. And the final thing I'll say and is that kind of going along with the Luke thing is just poor writing as far as Luke to me not being Luke and, or even necessarily a well-written character because the decisions that he makes don't really affect a whole lot. Besides at the end, the only Luke thing he does is let his friends escape. But even then, it really relies more on what Ray does in that moment than really anything Luke does because they just kind of stand there and watch him the whole time. The, ro- the, the Rose, this one, for me, everyone crapped on Kelly Marie Tran so unfairly. So she didn't write the stupid character. I'm sorry, it's just she deserves better. She's a, well, Actually, I can't say if she's a good actress or not because I've never seen her in anything else. But... I would assume that she's at least somewhat decent and and her decisions just make no sense because why her sister just gave her life for the resistance. Why is she suddenly like, oh, love is what's going to save us? No, I'm sorry. Love is not what's going to save you. It's fighting to destroy this force that you're up against. That's what your sister just gave her life for. And, and now you're just going to let them use their battering ram because oh, you kind of like this guy. Uh, that's, that's not the type of love that should matter based off of what her character cares about. And Rey is interesting by default, and I agree with Case that she's a great character in The Force Awakens, but what are her conflicts in this? She's just an automatic badass, basically, and even being tempted by the dark side is never that much of a conflict for her because when Snoke is torturing her in that ent- entire exchange, she denies him. So she's never really that tempted by the dark side. Otherwise, she would start to give in like Luke does at the point. No, but that's, that's, the that's not what Snoke is trying to do in that scene. Snoke is just trying to slowly kill her. Yeah, well, because he, he literally says to her, first you'll tell me where Luke is, and then I'll kill you with a cruel stroke. That's literally what he says. So he doesn't even want to tempt her to the dark okay, side. That's what maybe not, in, maybe not in that position, but still, no matter how you look at it, really, what is her conflict? Okay. And, and, uh, uh, okay. Her parents. Her parents are her conflict. Two, what does that two, do? It doesn't change any of her decisions. And then the final thing I'll say, and then I'll let you guys talk the rest of the time, is why is everyone happy at the end of the movie? Like nothing has gone right. They're losing. Who's happy? <laughs> no one's happy. The very final shot, or not the very final shot. Right at the end, everyone's standing in whatever ship they're in. Is it the Millennium Falcon or something? It's and there's yeah. really people they're, smiling. They're, they're, because they're not dead. They're not dead. That, that's a good reason to be happy. I do not give a baker's fuck. That's 13 fucks. So <laughs> nothing has gone right. They shouldn't be happy. Like, there's just... Look at the end of, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinions, probably the majority of people's opinions, the best Star Wars movie, which is The Empire Strikes Back. Nobody's fucking happy. Nobody's happy because Okay, they are- and yet Luke, Leia... Lando and Chewbacca all have smiles on their faces as the Millennium Falcon takes oh, off. They, no, yes. No, yeah, they, they do. do. Oh, no. I agree, agree. Those smiles are fake because they're they're, they're, they're holding on to they're holding on to strands what? of hope. But they're still like they have to put on a smile on their face just so that they can fucking survive, so they can even think for two seconds. I'm sorry. I just disagree that the I think that the tone is completely different. I think if you because I did which there I agree. And look at the two clips back to back because I wanted to 
see if because I watched The Last Jedi and I was like, is this weird that they're smiling? And then, yes, okay, there's the one part where Lando is wearing Han Solo's jacket for whatever reason, and there are smiles in that exchange. But after that, they're standing there, and the general feeling when I watch it is like, are we going to be okay? Is kind of between Luke and Leia. Is like, and are we going to be the okay? That's yes. the Falcon and the Last Jedi. And I don't think so. And yes, at the end of every Star Wars movie, you have your triumphant music. It's not like a Game of Thrones show where it ends on like a sad music. So yes, it's always going to feel somewhat triumphant just by John Williams' default. But to me, it's a completely different feeling. Maybe obviously this is all just my interpretation. I mean, I can't control how you guys feel. That's Ryan Johnson's job. But the way that he controlled how I feel is not the way that I think he could have controlled how I feel because I think he's a I think he's a much better writer than a lot of the lazy character decisions and writing decisions that he made. So I know everyone in the world is going to disagree with me, but I just had to say. No, the the, the sad thing is I. I, I hold on though. Much Real like quick, the much like the internet itself on this movie, it split down the middle. Uh, don't compare me to some stupid Star Wars fans because I actually have. I'm not. Well- I'm fucking I'm not. not. Sure, let's make it sure. I love you, Chris. I love you too, Ryan. I I I, I would give you a hug because we're we're you know much like how you and I did after the pipe bomb incident. Uh, you know we're we're discussing, we're having yes. discourse. Yes. And so, case before I give uh, my counter argument, please. But I am requiring you give a critique of the film. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. Um, I I am actually having a very hard time to even try and remember all the points that I want to counter from Ryan because there were way too many that I I just, I don't even care. And that's kind of my thing with the Last Jedi. Yes, the movie has issues. Oh my fucking god, a movie has issues. Have you seen any movie ever? Any movie ever has issues. However, uh, there is a reason uh, that The Last Jedi is my second favorite Star Wars movie. There's a reason that Return of the Jedi, oh my fucking god, I'm gonna blow everyone's fucking minds, is my third favorite Star Wars movie. You know why? Despite the issues that those movies have, I don't give a flying fuck. I honestly don't. Because the issues get washed away by the amazing and great moments that those movies have, that what I about honestly the think the issues in the Phantom Menace. The Phantom Actually, Menace. That's kind of my thoughts on Phantom Menace. I don't care look, that there are look, a lot I'm of just, issues. I'm asking Case though. Look, the, 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 the thing, the thing is, but with the with the Phantom Menace, um, there aren't enough great things for me to make sure that the issues are washed away. They're like really the only scene I really like in the Phantom Menace is the pot race, and that's oh my it. God. To, oh my I, I I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Like uh, honestly, the only the only scene in the Phantom Menace that I think is a great scene is the pot race. The rest is fine and watchable. Um, and there are plenty of issues, but if I turn my brain off, I can at least watch it. But there isn't anything. Uh, in the Phantom Menace, for me, that I think, oh, that is great. I don't love the duel at the end, like a lot of people do, because I think that the... that's Because discussion. you have no appreciation for fighting. No, I have an appreciation for conflict between no, you No, you don't. You don't appreciate good, actually, like, truly well-choreographed <laughs> look, stage look, fighting. Look, this, is, this is a discussion for another time. Anyway, <laughs> what The Last Jedi has, um, like... A lot of people will probably hate me for saying this, but I absolutely love the scene where Leia reaches out to the Force for the first time in history of Star Wars canon. Oh, no, wait, that's not entirely true. Actually, it has been established in canon. So a lot of people who were before the movie claiming, oh, I want to see Leia use the Force. There you have it. I hate Leia using the Force. <laughs> um, God... <laughs> But we just gave you Leia using the Force. Like, What's your issue with this? See, the, prom, I, I, the, problem, the problem is a lot of Star Wars fans these days are like pregnant wives. It's, it, yeah, it's it's like I've seriously. Uh, pe- people have been have known Leia as a Force user or a lightsaber user in Legends, and she has actually been established as having the Force in canon. And then they show it finally in the movie, and people are still against it. I'm like, 
I love that moment. I, I, uh, I cried when uh, her theme kicked in, and that is mostly because of the recent death of the actress at that point, that everything just came together. Because right now, when I rewatch the movie, I don't cry as much. But back then, I was sitting in the theater crying like a little bitch because, yes, uh, it was Leia, and it was a theme, and it was beautiful, and I fucking loved it. I still love the moment, though. I still love that we finally have Leia reaching out in the forest. That was something that I have always wanted to see, and we got it, and I'm, like, happy that we got it. And I was happy with the execution, unlike millions of others. That's okay, though. Um, I love Luke's character because, honestly, as I said, who is the character that we cling on to in this trilogy to be essentially us? That's Rey. So uh, I follow Rey in terms of the character that I... Uh, cling on to and Luke is now a different character than we know and I still it's still I think it's still in line with what he uh, with what he was in the original trilogy where in the original trilogy uh in in Return of the Jedi he snaps and he lashes out at, at his father at Vader because of w something that Vader did and he does the same thing at Kylo or at least almost lashes out at him and then realizes the mistake and then he just uh, is ashamed and he goes into hiding like any Jedi master has ever done. <laughs> Obi-Wan did it. Yoda did it. And in Star Wars Legends, there have been a lot more masters who did the exact same thing. Yeah. So I'm not surprised by it. I'm honestly not surprised by the move that Luke made because it makes perfect sense. In If he is a Jedi and he, if he is that character, it makes perfect sense to me. And then uh, he makes that joke at the beginning of the movie saying, what do you think? I'm going to face the entire First Order. And he does that at the end of the movie in the way that is probably the most Jedi way to do it. He isn't there, but it is still a representation. He distracts the First Order so that the rest can get away. He helps them. He sacrifices them. It's a beautiful moment. It still makes me cry because, yes... Seeing Luke Skywalker die on screen, that makes me cry, and it is beautiful, and I think it's a perfect ending of his arc, of his character. So, I love Chris, that. Um, do, you so, think, yes. yeah, do, you actually, do you actually like that addition to lore? As far as, like, yes, force projection, okay, but I love it. Like, the way that it's used. It's and now, it's, to be fair, the way that it's used, said, I, you know, have, I, I, I have issue with it, but I love the idea of okay. it. I was just curious. I like it, too. I because, really like that. You know, I mean, you, shit, to be fair... If I knew a good way to use it in my show, I would, but I don't know how to use it effectively. Shameless plug. That's true. No, shameless plug, right? <laughs> but actually, so, Case, okay, sorry to cut you off, but I want to oh, give uh, Nico a moment oh, here to... I, I do have to give one criticism, and that's oh, the what? What? <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, what have you been saying? That, 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 <laughs> we haven't had one criticism yet, sorry. Uh, and that's just the character of Rose. I'm not against Kelly Marie Trent. I just think the character of Rose is not the best character in this movie. And, yeah, she, has, and yeah. she has, like, the worst line of this movie. And there's, in the end, yeah, there is really no point for her to be in this movie. So, um, look, I was not one of those assholes to get her off Twitter because I didn't tweet at her. I didn't say anything against the actress. I'm just against the character in this movie. I think that her character in this movie is eh, and I don't care. And she doesn't have any payoff. So I'm like, yeah, that could have been cut out. But other than that, I love the movie, and it's my second favorite Star Wars movie. That's what I'll say. Nico? Okay, I'll give the critique first, because it's, it's quick, and it's already been said. Uh, and that's the, uh, I'll mostly say it's the ending to Rose's story for the movie. It, it, it ends on a weird note uh, and that feels a little inconsistent with what we've been building with her. Now, I'm just going to leave it at that for the critique. But to counter a lot of what Ryan brought up, first, Luke throwing the saber. Why did he throw the saber away? Because he has PTSD, something a lot of your brothers in the military might eventually have one day through combat and through whatever the future may hold for them. Just saying, that could be a possibility. That saber, at this point in Luke's life, is a symbol of his biggest failure, uh, uh, which is him turning his own nephew to the dark side, him chasing his nephew away and his nephew then becoming this I mean, monster. No, no, no. That's that, that saber no, that's, is that's from not... The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. So they killed against saber. Vader. I mean, if you want to say it's now, to be fair, to be fair, it's from the same almost fucked up moment of his life, but yeah. but still, I mean, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. 
But still, that moment is a galaxy-changing mm. moment. It's a galaxy-changing tragedy. And that saber is a reminder of why he went to Octu in the first place. He went there to cut himself off from the Force because in his mind at this point in time, the Force is just nothing but trouble. That lightsaber is just nothing but trouble. And he, he at this point in time, feels like the galaxy would be better off without the Jedi, without the Sith without uh, force users uh, of that magnitude because uh, really history has shown that they kind of cause a lot of problems within the galaxy. So that that's why Luke throws the saber. It's because uh, his belief system has changed as a result of events that have happened in his life that have led him to believe that it's just... I get why. Just like, I still don't like it. That's all. I just think it's a lazy choice as far as like whether it's played for laughs or shock, I don't know. But either way, I don't appreciate why it was used. But I understand. Thank you. And as for, like, you asked, what is Ray's conflict in this movie? Her conflict is her identity. She's trying to figure out, is she the next Luke? Do her parents, whoever they may be, determine what her legacy is? Or does she get to determine her own destiny? And in the end, she picks the latter. She chooses her own fate. And we see her choose her own fate uh, uh, throughout this film because it, it's very interesting because Ryan Johnson once described Ray and Kylo Ren as co-protagonists. And, and, and it's just a where do their journeys lead them to? Now, Ray, despite being the hero, she has a lot of darkness in her. Kylo, despite being the villain, villainous co-protagonist, co he has a lot of light left in him. And as we go through this movie, and as these two converse with one another through the Force, through these weird astral projections, uh, um, uh, Ray starts moving very much more to the light, and Kylo starts moving way more to the dark. It's like they're, it's like the more they interact, the more they're swapping each other's uh, uh, energies. Uh, to where Ray, after that battle in the throne room, she is fully embrace the light side and Kylo has fully embraced the dark side. Let it is uh, with also, what it says how the great is that battle. <laughs> it is a great I'll battle. It is a it is a great battle. But like basically I just wanted to touch on those because there is a lot of symbolism going on here that it, I feel like it, it's not fair to call it lazy writing just because you didn't really like how uh, that symbolism played out because I think that the symbolism, it has reason to be there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. And uh, it, it's its telling a story that just you have to have an artistic mind to be able to see. Uh, um, and uh, Or you, you saw it more likely if you have sort of an art, artistic That's okay. mind. No offense and, taken. <laughs> and by the way, I just, I just want to say one more thing. In regards to Canto Bite, which I know a lot of people have a problem with, <sighs> oh. this is why this is why I keep. I'm probably the most okay with it. Uh, <laughs> watch Lego Star Wars: The Freemaker Adventures, and then watch the spin-off mini series called Lego Star Wars All Stars, because All Stars mm. it, it it gives you a story that takes uh, that sort of at, at least for a portion takes place on Canto Bight. That that is a little bit more fun. Uh, that kind of coincides with the ongoings of uh, the Last Jedi at that time and place. And um, I, I feel like if you didn't enjoy what you saw in the movie on Canto Bite, you'll enjoy what happened in All Stars on Canto Bite. Also, I'm still yet to read the book Canto Bite. <laughs> Same. Now. My main criticism of this movie is the same criticism that I actually have of the entire Disney era so far. Wait. Oh, of Star Wars? Yeah. Okay. My bad. And that is... I'm not saying that <laughs> Lucasfilm is intentionally doing this, because they're not. But some with with how much... They have been pumping out in terms of books, comics, shows, whatnot. It feels like it becomes required viewing to fully appreciate <coughs> the stories being told in current canon. Because as, as much crap as you know the, the prequels get... And granted, I'm 
I'm the wrong person to say it because I will defend all three of them till the day I fucking die for some fucking reason. You're gonna be buried with them. I will be. I will be. <laughs> I will literally be, be be buried with like a Blu-ray copy of each yes. film in the Star Wars franchise. That would be awesome. Because look, I'm. I, the reason I'm single is I am married to Star Wars. Plain and simple. I like it. Like no, it. that's not the reason you're single. But continue your <laughs> point, Eddie. <anyway. laughs> but, but, but anyway, but anyway, um, no, uh, and so. But the problem is, I will argue that. As bad as episodes one and two are, they're still their own independent story, and they don't really need any outside material to fully understand what's happening in that specific movie. Force Awakens, oh my God! If you don't, if you, if you don't read Bloodline, you have no idea what the fuck the political structure of the galaxy is at is at that time. You have no fucking clue. Same thing goes but, with Last Jedi. You like literally, and, and again, I'm as a lore junkie. I'm 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 the I'm the wrong person to be saying this. But, ugh, it frust both these movies just frustrate me in the fact that they have they sure they have the balls to challenge you about characters that you know. They have the balls to challenge you about storytelling. They, they have the balls to challenge you about. What to expect when you are tackling some very adult themes like identity, who you are, what you can what you can become. But the simple but the thing that people also forget is this is Star Wars. This is an established universe where, you know, I'd like to at least kind of know what's going on in the galaxy and not once, not fucking once. Do we even get a mention as to what's going on? It's all about really, all you get what's happening in the moment. Wrong is when they die. I mean, that's really all you get. That's it. With people on uh, I forget the planet name. Hosnian Prime. Hosnian Prime. Thank you. That's all you get. Now, Grant, well, I give a shit about that now because of Resistance and Bloodline and Bloodline. Good. But, well, with, but uh, without no, look. without those, I give no shits. But that's the thing, what they tried to do with The Force Awakens is let's not have the political bullshit because honestly, um, what was one of the things that most people bitched about about the prequels? The political bullshit that nobody gives a shit but about. You can, that's but that's the only be, thing that helps it make any form of Wait, sense. Yeah, you can no, no, no. You can context, it, though, to you, why you these can, things You can are do it well, cool. though, and we've seen that Clone in Clone Wars. Wars. In well, Clone Wars, they actually managed to give that political side an interesting turn, where they actually have fo- uh, sen- uh, um, uh, arcs and episodes focused on senators, and that's actually very interesting. So, yes, it can be done well. It's just that George didn't execute it well. Now, um, could J.J. and uh, Ryan make something good uh, out of a political structure? Probably, yes! Yeah. But... They didn't bother with that, and I'm okay with it because honestly, I think the movies in and of itself work. Case. But that's, I yeah. wonder what your opinion is, just real quick. Well, I'm just curious, like what your guys is, the two of you, what your comparison would be to when Alderaan gets blown up. I feel like you have a lot more context, at least emotionally, to yes, why that matters when Alderaan it's blows Leia's up. home planet. Yeah, and also, that's, that's and a also personal connection. Though, I mean, it's the home of. Um, Sort of, it's almost seen as the symbol of that rebellion at the time yeah. from Tarkin's which, which, point which of now view. Which now, granted, now granted, in 1977 that wasn't the case. So in that, but in that context, we still knew it was Leia's home planet. So we yeah. gave a shit instantly. Right. So we have nothing to care yeah, about in this new trilogy. You just see some people looking up, and, and yeah, it's so, just different. Sorry if I'm getting a little frustrated about, it, but just, but like, no, this we're, is. We're but this is the one thing about the se- about the sequel trilogy that I it, it drives me up the goddamn wall. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm being a prick about it. I think, it's, it. Awesome. I think but, it's awesome. You know, and no, Casey's giving me death glares, and please, by all means, please do. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not. Well, you're, okay, well, what are your positive? What's your big positive, though? What were you going to say for TLJ for your big positive? So my big positive for The Last Jedi, the score. Mm. Oh my god! Uh, like, good. like okay. 
Force Awakens, I give no shits about that score. Rogue One, Besides no the shit. Sorry. Besides Ray's theme, right? Well, right? yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. Come on. Come on. It's, it's Ray's theme. It's Ray's theme. <laughs> it's Ray's theme. Come on. <laughs> but, I mean, no. Like, John Williams has this weird thing where his the first score of his of, of his films in the Star Wars franchise are good, but not necessarily as memorable, save for a few pieces. Well, what, what is New Hope is... with New Hope being the exception? With New Hope being the exception. Okay, I was about to say what? <laughs> well, no, I I what? actually kind of agree. Uh, also on a New Hope, and it's probably mostly because of the fact that he first just creates themes that work well in and of itself, but not necessarily places them the best in the movie. Because honestly, I love the score of a New Hope, but the but themes that the he uses and reuses in Empire are better. Yes. So you know and. I mean, Jesus Christ. As much as I give Attack of the Clones shit as a movie, oh, yeah. that oh, score is one score? of the best in the franchise. I don't care what anyone says. For me, it's my number three. I mean, Revenge of the Sith is pretty much the best one besides A New Hope Empire. slash yeah, Empire. Yeah. So. And, well, Six and, of One yeah. Half doesn't get it for those. But yeah, no matter which one of those you like more, I think you have to put Revenge of the Sith second because that opening... <sighs> And, so and, and, and and the track of Anakin versus Obi Wan and Duel of the, and Battle of Heroes. Battle of the Heroes. Oh my god. Ultimate classic. Oh. Well, and and the the constant evolution. Honestly, you want to talk about what Case was saying about growing up themes. You have across the stars, and I can't remember exactly how it like the title that it plays into in Revenge of the Sith, but the evolution of their theme is oh. incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> and yeah. you know, like and. And that was that, that was the thing that I was missing in Force Awakens the most. Was the just the perfect moments of score. Like for example, in Last Jedi, when Rey is just swinging her saber around on Octu and then her theme kicks in. Her theme, yeah. And then also the Force theme kicks in. And I'm just like, "Oh my god, By this the is way, too perfect." There there is a moment in the Last Jedi uh, when uh, stormtroopers are marching towards the hangar. Uh, and they're about to have the execution of Finn and Rose, and you have that, uh, and you have this march, and the stormtroopers are actually marching on the same yeah. beat, yeah. and it is so good. And the thing is, at that point, I realized, oh, this is a great theme, but it's actually already used in the Force Awakens. But the moment yeah. it's used in the Force Awakens, you don't give a shit because it's not well used. No. And in the Last Jedi, it's so perfect because it's like, dun, 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 dun. Uh, no, wait, it's. <laughs> I, I don't remember, yeah. but it, just the way it's synced up, it's like, oh my god, this is great. Where was this in Force Awakens? <laughs> yeah, and you know, and of course, big shock. The music guy is gonna, you know, kiss the music's ass for a moment here. But hell, <laughs> one of my least favorite lines in all of Star Wars is when Finn tells Phasma, "Let's go, Chrome Dome." Oh gosh, yeah. But oh. the song oh. called Chrome Dome. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that song is so beautiful. Like, like that's shit. I if if if, if I, I could if I could like buy the rights to that song, I would so use it in my show because oh, it's yeah, I, it's perfect. I remember that you said that you had issues with some of the language used, and I actually agree. <laughs> yes, I mean, for example, yeah. who the hell would say Godspeed? In no, who Just, the hell would no. say who the hell would say big it's called, ass may the door? Be with you. Yeah, big ass yeah. door, I'm okay with because it's Poe. I'm more okay with that. No. But yeah, no. Godspeed and Chrome, there are some questionable things that I'm like, really, Brian? <laughs> is this say, what the yeah, characters would say? Yeah, yeah. Chrome Dome is what uh, Drew Carey used to call Colin Mockery back on Whose Lines and Anyway. True. But... <laughs> that's <laughs> but... a good reference, man. Wow, that's going back. Oh, hell yeah. I just oh. went there, motherfuckers. But no, back so... when I was still drinking Capri Suns. Just kidding. I still was drink. This, was this... Okay, okay, Ken Napsack. Was this after sex or what? <laughs> no, that's different. <laughs> but no, okay. But no, and then the one last thing. I adore pretty much all the action in this movie. But in particular, the throne room sequence. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> honestly, it's better than any fight in the original trilogy. 
Okay, that's not that's not true. That's not true. Oh, that's not true. Yeah. That's not true. Be careful. That's not true. I will take that back. I'm, 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 it's, better, back. it's better choreographed. It's better choreographed than any fight in the original trilogy. Yeah, okay, but we're also decades separated. So I know, don't... I know, I know. I'm but you got to remember, much like Nico, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighting fencing fighter. guy. So oh, I, yeah. I, I appreciate <laughs> great choreography. Yeah. Unlike some people on this call. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Case. Don't, sorry, don't throw me under the bus. I do appreciate some choreography. I don't. I just want it to actually be like fighting and not dancing. That's my thing. <laughs> well, well, anyway, anyway. What you, but no, what you were like, saying but was. no, this was some of the best action choreography I've seen this decade yeah. in any film. Yeah. So. And plus. Like, it's especially great because you feel every emotion because you see Ray and Kylo Ren and you're feel you're being like, oh my god, a movie ago I hated the idea of Raylo and now I just want Raylo to have it more than any fucking thing in this yeah. whole entire fucking franchise. Now, like the biggest proponent of Raylo. I am. I am. <laughs> like literally, yeah. after Force Awakens, I'm like, oh my god. If if Raylo happens, I'm gonna hate Star Wars forever. But now I'm like, if Raylo doesn't happen, I'm gonna hate Star Wars forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen before the other episode nine, and then Kylo's probably gonna die in some kind of way. <laughs> probably, probably. But yes, so that's that's essentially why I just I for as many problems because Ryan, to be honest, most of your arguments I agree with you on, minus the Luke stuff. Yeah, I know. Because... No one agrees with me on that. Well, no. No, 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 I'm in the minority on Luke because I like Luke for once. Yeah, I think a lot of people really like it, to be honest. No, they don't. I think you always hear the negative. That's more vocal. I mean, the vocal minority is the negativity for Because that's like Most people don't give a shit. Right. With... The thing is with Luke, um, most people absolutely love him in the original trilogy. Well, honestly, in the original trilogy, he doesn't really get that much character up until Return of the Jedi. And he's a good character in Return of the Jedi, I guess, but he's not the best. So when he finally got a character in The Last Jedi, I was like, oh my god, he finally has a character. Wow, this happened. <laughs> he went from a whiny character in A, in a New Hope and evolved into the super zen master character uh, that sure, will occasionally so. have an, that will occasionally have an angry outburst uh, all the way up to return of the jedi the, in in the last jedi we truly see him having to deal with emotions <laughs> because for the longest time he had shut those emotions out because traditional jedi practices kind of made him keep his emotions in check all the time they do you credit but they could be made to serve the emperor can we at least agree that like the second greatest scene is the Yoda scene? Please, dear God, yes. I love that scene so much. Yes. It's yes. like the greatest lines of Yoda's ever, except for the most famous ones. So okay, I time out, time out. Did, did anyone else think Puppet Yoda looked a little bloated? No. 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 I thought it looked good. I actually love that they went back puppet. I know. Like, gosh. Please do it's, not. For the love uh, of God, give me goddamn CGI now, Yoda now, again. And to be fair, <laughs> I will defend CGI Yoda to an extent. At least by Revenge of the Sith, it looks pretty good. But yeah. eh. But, yeah. I'm, uh, but, I, but I was well, so happy. I was I, so happy. It's actually was a good puppet. looking puppet, unlike original The Phantom Menace. I defend CGI Yoda in the prequels insofar as it was better than that shitty fucking puppet. Oh my god. But, yeah, well, yeah, I, let's I, CGI <laughs> Yoda in Phantom Menace is better than the puppet Yoda in Phantom yeah. Menace. <laughs> I, I, I just feel like this particular puppet was a little bloated in the cheeks. That, Look, that's just me. Dude, he's a ghost. He's living it up in ghost heaven. Yeah, he's I, I was about to say. <laughs> You know, and, and for all, for all we know, day. Force Ghost uh, having you know, you can like, you know, you you still have to like eat and whatnot. So maybe yeah. you know, Yoda's just not working out as much as he used to. So <laughs> he, maybe he just skipped a leg day at the gym. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I, like I have not not not, not worked out recently, but, have I? <laughs> not have I found uh, fought Dooku or Sidious? <laughs> uh, okay, but no, so. We, 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 we've run long, but you know what? I don't care. Say, yeah. I don't. I don't care. It's Star run. Wars. It's Star Wars. We can. We could talk for literally almost an entire day on Star Wars. And do you want to know something? I don't think any of us would get bored. 
No. 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 We would get really mad at each other. And really oh, yeah. We'd get real mad at each other. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> Someone's Star computer would get smashed. Star the sexiest character in Star Wars. Fight me. Boom. There we go. No, no, no. Salacious be crumb. Oh. Now, okay. I oh. can get on board with that. Yeah, fa- fair enough, Case. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Nico's like, All right. what the fuck did okay. I join? <laughs> but no, so to, 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 to take control back of the conversation for a moment. So here's what we're going to do before we close out the show for the night. Um, I'm going to go around the horn one time, and I want everyone to give just one one thing based on everything we've seen so far from eight from seven and eight what's what's the what's one storyline you want to see resolved in episode nine just just one piece nico should go first and i was about to say nico please go first uh simply put i want to see the continuation of the evolution of ray as a character we, we've seen her uh We've seen her start out as a very capable fighter on this planet of Jakku who was just trying to survive. And now she realizes she has a purpose in this galaxy it, it, and with the force on her side. Her destiny is her destiny to decide. And she's deciding to potentially, and at least that's what I think is being foreshadowed. Her destiny is to potentially bring back not the Jedi Order, but at least a, a, a Force-based order on the side of good. And, uh, you know, I'm very curious to see, like, what kind of master will she be? What kind of teacher will she be? What kind of new lightsaber will she have? Will it be one of... Will it be Luke's... Uh, will it be a version of Luke's second lightsaber, the green one? Will she just take the crystal and create a new one with her with the leftover pieces from her staff? Yeah, uh, right. Uh, uh, like uh, th- there are so many possibilities, and in regards to Chris's theory about uh, Raylo becoming a thing, <laughs> I, 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 if I may just speculate for a second, I'm going to reference a movie that I hate but Chris loves, and that's the 1950s version of Ben Hur. I remember that Ben Hur, uh, that his storyline uh, with the person who put him on that slave ship. Uh, uh, it's essentially a love story gone wrong. Like uh, uh, the the villain of the story felt brokenhearted by Ben Hur, and that's why he put him on that slave ship, and it ended up with one of them dying. I could see that sort of playing out with Ray and Kylo Ren, in that Kylo is heartbroken that Ray won't join him on the dark side, and so it ends up with them fighting, and lo and behold, Ray ends up killing him because I do not think Kylo will be redeemed. But I think still he fucking. is too. <laughs> I, 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 I basically think Kylo is too far gone at this point to be redeemed. And also it's a, it's been a big complaint that people don't want to see him be redeemed because we saw that already with, uh, with his grandpa. So we, we, that's a, that's a beat from the original trilogy that we'd like to see not repeated. Fair enough. Uh, Ryan probably going to come as a surprise to a lot of people but i actually want to see luke come back as a force ghost i want to see some he's already confirmed to come back as a he force is confirmed ghost. yeah okay <laughs> i want to see him come back as a force ghost because it's confirmed to happen and that's the resolution that i want is to see luke come back as a force ghost and do whatever he does i mean i don't know what he's gonna do i can't read anybody's minds but i would hope that it's help ray do more things whether that be hey yeah you know, Ren, he's he's hot as fuck. He should go for that. I don't care what his advice <laughs> is. But there better be something. Like, I just want to see him come back. And I want to see... I think we've all wanted to see Luke as a Force ghost since we were kids. Because it's just a cool idea. So, fucking send it. So, you want to see Skywalker? Skywalker does whatever Skywalker does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want him to just, like, pop up I mean, to be fair... And, like, look- Look, yeah. the, the, the the problem with, with the members of my family is that you know we all just want to have glo- we just, we just want to be glory hogs after <laughs> we die. So <laughs> no, but honestly, I think that there's obviously yes, we know it's going to happen, blah blah blah, whatever. But I think that that's the storyline that I want to see. I want to see more of Luke Skywalker. Fair enough. Uh, Case. Well, uh, it's already been said, Raylo. That's just one thing <laughs> I'm dying to see more of. Uh, and that's mostly because of the best character in these two movies so far, Kylo Ren. 
seriously, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren is so goddamn awesome. And what he has been going through, especially in The Last Jedi, how his uh, character has evolved uh, past more than just his Vader wannabe, um, it makes him so interesting and so layered that I'm like, I cannot wait to see where his story goes because he is in a way not necessarily a, the antagonist of this trilogy anymore he is kind of a co-protagonist he is the counterbalance of ray and i cannot wait to see how he grows in the next uh, movie and hopefully more towards ray i actually do think that they can redeem him but more in the way that um like he can actually survive he can be redeemed uh, be redeemed and survive and then start this new order with Ray, perhaps. Otherwise, he'll probably be killed, which is something that I already have to accept and I will hate, but whatever. Uh, also, I want to see the Knights of Ren, which oh, has yes. teased in The Force Awakens, and I'm like, well, JJ has said after The Force Awakens, I want to make a Knights of Ren movie, or I want a Knights of Ren movie to be made. Well, JJ, you got the reins in episode nine. Give us the Knights of Ren then. <laughs> because we have Kylo now in full power. He can use them. And I think that would be a very cool thing, especially if there is a certain uh, member of those called Jason Sindula, which is... Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a th that's a theory beyond anything that uh, is probably not going to happen, but I would just love for it to happen. <laughs> he would cry. So Case would cry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> But hey, I do think that the Knights of Ren and Kylo could be an extremely awesome storyline in the next movie. Chris is so disappointed in you right now. He doesn't what? know what to what? say. What? Oh, shit. Oh. I genuinely... No, no. no. Oh, my gosh. See, now, because you started off so strong. Because, yes, Raylo is Raylo. one of my things. But... I, I, and I have my own crazy idea of how I want that to go because I just want them to hook up one time because, of course, that's all it takes, right? True. Because True. I want Ray to metaphorically and literally birth, birth. the new <laughs> Jedi Order. Because this isn't yeah. the end of the Skywalker story. This can't be. I know that they're saying it is. It's not. No, it's, it's too not. much money. It's too much money. <laughs> so here's what you do. You get Ray pregnant. She is birth to Kylo's son. And then, sure, Kylo dies at the end of the movie. Great. But do you want to know what the next trilogy is? We're going to wait about 10 years. We're going to let we're going to let that we're going to scoot up ahead about 20 some years. And that kid, that child, let's say it's a girl, why not? Cuz I'm actually cuz I'd be cool with that. That girl's responsibility now is to clean up her father's mess. Over 3 films. She's going to fix what he started. <laughs> yes. Because do you, do you want to know something? I wish there was a – like cause part, part of the reason why I miss Legends is because there's a lot of stories wherein Luke and Leia actually go across the galaxy and try to fix a lot of the crap <clears throat> that Vader and the Empire did. I miss that. So if this is my way of getting that, hey – let me have it. But no, my real thing is I only want one thing from episode nine. I want to see a lightsaber duel that for me personally, there you go, that will top Anakin versus Obi-Wan. You know, it's not going to happen in terms of choreography. Fingers fucking crossed. It's not, it's not gonna happen uh, ever. You don't know. Fingers no, no, no. fucking no. crossed. J JJ literally said it in an interview uh, that they where they asked him what is the uh, fighting so gonna be like, and he's like, I don't think we're ever gonna top the choreography that George did in the prequels because honestly, I don't want it's just it. Something to. you say though. Uh, and no, but I I also don't want it to like. Uh, look, you say they don't start a choreography, but I do like my choreography realistic, and I don't think in the prequels that a choreography is realistic, and that's why I think that keep the choreography up that you've been having throughout Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, because honestly, it's given us some great fights, and a lot of people praise that throne room scene. So seriously, that uh, you need something like that. It's choreographer, uh, choreographer. 
choreographed. Choreographed. Uh, Jesus. Okay, I can see. Here, here's, here's, no, no, no. It's choreographed well, but it still feels like they're actually fighting each other rather than just practicing their moves that they've been practicing for three months because that's what they've been practicing for fucking ever, and it's dancing. That's my issue with the prequels. I, I, here, here's the thought. Here, here's the thought. What if the lightsaber aspect of the choreography feels very much like a fight? But they make up for the lack of craziness that was in the Revenge of the Sith. They make up for it by by by, by, <laughs> by, by what if they, they make up have a like that? Case it makes sense. Let me speak, damn it! Ugh. Poor Nico. Sorry uh, for crying out loud. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. As I was saying, what if they make the lightsaber aspect of the choreography realistic, but to make up for the fact that it's not as whirly twirly as it was in Revenge of the Sith, they go balls to the wall with the force powers usage within the battle. That could be cool. As far as lightning, because I'm down for that shit. Like just new powers that we might not have even seen before, because we know that these two characters are some of the most powerful force users in recent memory. So uh, so they can so they can do some things that we haven't seen before that they might even not know that they can do yet. And Man, what would, are they going to do? Shit flames? Like there's so many things you can do. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But oh that but God. that but but I I, w- I would like to believe that that's how they'll do the battle and just to finish off this conversation what the hell has lando calrissian been doing lately <laughs> i think we'll see that in the next episode we will see that yeah, finally yeah. because i've been I, I follow him on twitter and i'm watching his workout videos and i'm like good for you man awesome. <laughs> where in the world is lando calrissian absolutely we're in the galaxy where the oh, galaxy? Chase, shut the fuck up all right so yes finally guys Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Who Cares Anyway podcast. This uh, Probably this, nobody. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm sure most <laughs> of the audience has sadly left, but I'm sure they'll be back to listen to what was left of the show tomorrow, which I know I'll be doing while I'm at work because, you know, I want to listen back and make sure that, you know, nothing too stupid was said. Uh, but then again, it's us. It's us. Yeah. It is us. Let's be fair. <laughs> so, guys, we'll be back next week. Of course, with uh, all the latest, latest and greatest in movie news, as well as for all you Collider Live fans, we will have on the call David B. and Thrawn 2K5, two of the other big songwriters of Collider Live, which I'm I'm incredibly happy about. Uh, to basically, you know, talk about the show, talk about parody songs, and talk about uh, being songwriters, and also just to talk about movies, because you know what? We love movies around here. But until we get to there, thank you, everybody. Please like, please comment, please subscribe if you're watching on the replay. And send out a link. Share it. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram if you can figure out how to. Assuming Instagram doesn't break down on you first, though, because that was a big thing that happened this week. But until, <laughs> until, until then, everybody, Case, where can the good folks find you online? You can find me saying stupid things right here on this channel, <laughs> apparently. Uh, you can find me, Case Grenadus, uh, on Facebook and Letterboxd and at Dutch Movie Guy on Twitter, competing over at Multiplex at certain um, matches. And uh, I'm forgetting something. Oh, right. Resistance! Yay! It's, Yay! it's ending. Our review is going up on Sunday, so check out our review for the last episode of Resistance uh, of Season 1. It's going to be awesome. I know it is, so check that out. Nico, where can the good folks find you online? <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, at Nico Suave Regoli. That's N-I-C-O-S-U-A-V-E-R-E-G-O-L-I. You can find me right here on Dedicated Art and all the places Case just said and all the places Chris will say in just a moment. You can find <laughs> me over on Multiplex Entertainment. That's the name of the Facebook group and the YouTube channel. The Twitter is at MultiplexYT. The Instagram is Multiplex Entertainment Network. The T-Publix is just Multiplex 
Buy Our Awesome Shirts. Zaddy Smith and I host a weekly uh, Arrowverse discussion show that also talks about other stuff going on in the geek world. Uh, we call it Crisis on Earthplex, and it is every Wednesday starting between 9 and 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And finally, Combat Wrestling Trivia is the name of the Facebook group. Combat Wrestling Network is the name of the YouTube channel. The poorly made Twitter <coughs> is at Combat Wrestling without the G wrestling. and then the number two. Yes, <laughs> re- Wrestling, the number two. Uh, so if you like wrestling, if you like wrestling trivia, then come find us. We'll get you a match and we'll see if you have what it takes to be one of the best. All right, Ryan. I'm on Twitter at Plan McClellan. That's it. <laughs> and he's on Instagram wow. at Vintage Sights and Sounds. And oh, yeah. of course, you guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Stardust, and Letterbox at Skywalker Dome. And you guys can follow this very channel on Twitter and Instagram at D2A Channel. Please like our Facebook page <coughs> and uh, stay tuned for our Schmo Down uh, re- uh, reaction, which will drop later tonight. Please stay tuned for our Resistance recap. Season one ends on Sunday. I'm so fucking excited! And, of course, stay tuned for next week when, like I said, we have David B. and Thrawn 2K5 on. I'm incredibly excited. So, from all of us here at Dedicated <laughs> Art, you know what to do. Take care! Yeah! <laughs>